Last week, number 10, Steve Bartkowski threw two touchdown passes, but the Atlanta Falcons lost a one-pointer to the Minnesota Vikings 24 to 23. On the other hand, Steve Grogan had three touchdown passes for the New England Patriots, a very impressive 34-17 win over the Cleveland Browns. It's game number two, the site Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts, as today the New England Patriots played host to the Atlanta Falcons. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender along with John Madden. And John, I honestly didn't know if they'd let you in the stadium today after all the misery you caused them as an Oakland coach. Over the years, we had a lot of big games with the Patriots and a lot of controversial games. And I think the fact that we arrived here early, I think we kind of sneaked in and they didn't see they us. They didn't throw anything at you. They couldn't. Speaking of throwing, last week, what a job by Tommy Kramer. He had 395 yards for the Minnesota Vikings. He drove Atlanta crazy. It was a long day for the Atlanta defense, and more specifically for rookie Kenny Johnson, number 37, who started in place of Rick Bias. On the other hand, Grogan was just outstanding, as he was the type quarterback that can hurt you in a hurry, including the 67-yarder to Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan, a, a very exciting play. You know, anytime he gets his hands on the ball, it's not only going to go that far, but it can go all the way on any play. Well, that's going to cause a problem for this Atlanta Falcon football team, obviously, after giving up 395 yards last week. Before the game, we visited with Coach Lehman Bennett of Atlanta and asked him what they're going to have to do. What I think will happen today is I think the Patriots come out and try to throw the ball on us and try for the big play. They have, uh, for a long time now, been a football team that would run it at you for a while and then try to go up on top with... Uh, and two, one of their uh, three fine uh, receivers. And uh, I think we'll have a difficult time this afternoon stopping it. Of course, we've worked very hard this week in preparation to get it stopped, and uh, we're anxious to find out whether or not we will. And we're going to find out in a hurry as this is going to be a young rookie, Mike Hubach from Kansas, who will do their punting and also kick off. They don't want John Smith kicking off because of a sore shoulder. And back deep, one of the most exciting young players in the National Football League, a young rookie. Reggie Smith from North Carolina Central. He is only five foot four. And here he is at the goal line. Smith out to the 20. He fumbled the football. And who's got it? It looks like New England has recovered inside the 15 yard line. Curtis McCray looked like the man that got on top of it. And that is a very costly turnover in the early going here for Atlanta. They're, they're all costly, but. You know, so many things seem to happen early in the season on special teams that change the, the the game. You know, big plays, and we just saw one of them on the opening play, Gary. Let's check now, John, the offensive alignment now for the New England Patriots. Explosive football team. John Hanna, he might be the best offensive lineman in the country. I feel that he is the best offensive lineman in the National Football League, if not one of the ten top players in the National Football League. Steve Grogan has Vegas Ferguson and Don Calhoun in the running back field, and this is Ferguson, the number one draft pick out of Notre Dame. Should say their second number one draft pick. They had two this year. Tom Pride more over there to make the stop. Defensively, Atlanta this year, John, has gone to a 3-4. They have they moved number 65, Don Smith, into the nose tackle. He was an end last year, and you know none of those players like to be moved in there. The linebacking core, though, played very well last week against Minnesota. Well, and and young Al Richardson, number 56, and Joe Williams, the outside linebackers, are two new starters. As is Buddy Curry, number 50. Krogan on a second down and five. End zone Hasselbeck touchdown. Don Hasselbeck who last week had a 17-yard touchdown strike, has his second of this 1980 season. You see here, one thing about Steve Grogan is he will move the pocket. You see, this is an organized rollout. Both guards pull, so he has an option to run or pass. He sees his big target in the end zone. Don Hasselbeck hits him for the touchdown. And so the Patriots waste no time capitalizing on that fumble. Less than a minute gone in this game, and they have 6 to nothing lead. Point yeah. after attempt coming up now by John Smith. They haven't missed Russ Francis thus far, have they? I don't think they have. Hasselbeck at six foot seven. It's hard to miss him. <laughs> Smith, who led the NFL in scoring a year ago, and he hit that one dead center. And the New England Patriots, with 14.07 to go in this first quarter of play, have struck and struck in a hurry as they have a seven to nothing lead. They got off the mark very quickly last week against the Cleveland Browns. Hubach to kick off again. John Madden, you've said many times early in the year, special teams make a lot of difference in a football game. I think if there's any one thing early in the season 
that wins and loses football games. It's the play of special teams. Here's Reggie Smith. He's going to try it again. He hangs on to the football and brings it out to the 24-yard line. Steve King over there to make the stop. It's interesting how special teams always play an important part, but you've got some guys that uh, in the National Football League for the first time, and strange things can happen. Well, it's really the first time that they've played together. They don't play together as teams in special teams until the regular season starts, and that's one of the reasons. Atlanta now down 7 to nothing with 13.58 to go in this first quarter. Jeff Van Noot, the center. Markowski, the quarterback, last week throwing for 165 yards. Andrews and Kane, the running backs. Kane with 123 yards a week ago. He has the first carry. And he's going to bring it across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Okay, offensively, this is an offensive line, John, that really has some good young people up front. They sure do, and the and the most impressive is their left tackle, number 78, uh, Mike Ken, six foot six, 257. He he has turned into a real premier pass protector. And in that backfield, Kane has been a very big surprise for this football team. It's amazing how strong he is. When he runs, he's very difficult to bring down. One person doesn't tackle uh, Kane on a play. Second down, six yards to go. A little delay to Andrews, and Andrews brings it out to the 32. He's going to be two yards short of the first down. Andrews, a 1,000-yard rusher last year as a rookie. What a surprise he was from Auburn. It was interesting as we see the play here, William Andrews, with the ball in the middle. We see how it opened up there, but the formation was three wide receivers on second down. What they were trying to do is get the New England defense spread out, thinking pass, and then try and pop William Andrews inside for a gainer. Jenkins, along with Francis, are really outstanding outside receivers for this Atlanta team. And that is Francis in motion on a third down, a yard to go. Andrews, did he get it? He's hit hard that time by Mike Hawkins. Hawkins, a left side linebacker, and it's going to be very close. I don't believe he got it. It looks like a fourth down. I don't think that he did either. I've always liked on short yardage to have a lead block go in in front of the ball carrier because it's tough enough to get movement there and when you put a lead blocker in front then you have have the extra player there that was just a a counter type thing where where uh, William Andrews went in there on his own well they're going to measure I guess nope they're not they're going to call it a fourth down they were thinking about measuring it our crew Fred Wyatt in control he's the referee for today's game and so one of the outstanding kickers in the game, John James, will come in, a nine-year veteran out of the University of Florida. Last week, he averaged 43.8. And he has, a, he has a difficult ball to handle. The spiral, it gets up and then comes back down. That just came naturally, or did he develop The same that? way that it goes up is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> this what? is Preston Brown back. He's going to let it hit. Brown's going to try it. He's the young rookie, sixth-round draft pick. <laughs> And he has swarmed in a hurry. He played his collegiate football at Vanderbilt. And so New England with a 7-0 lead will have the football after a 39-yard kick that time by John James. The New England Patriots, a 7-0 lead. They have the football at their own 27-yard line. Calhoun, Vegas Ferguson, the running backs, behind Steve Grogan. Grogan. Getting off to Vegas Ferguson, and he had some footing problems, and he lost the football. It's been picked up. Atlanta with it, the 25-yard line, and they have it. Vegas Ferguson, Calvary. All of a sudden, the ball got away from Ferguson. Looks like Jeff Yates fell on it. Let's look at it, John. And Jeff Yates teams made now the play. a tough time, aren't they? It was, it was a guard pull. It looked like Ferguson was going to follow the guard. He left the guard because Yates got penetration. They missed Yates on the play. He got upfield, which forced Ferguson inside, and then, of course, the fumble. So they've evened up now. Both teams turning the football over at the 25-yard line. Atlanta. Bartkowski. Off to Andrews. And Andrews inside the 20 to the 18-yard well, line. Carried by William. Andrews, a fullback type. And interestingly enough, John, so is Kane. They've had two ex-fullbacks do a very good job. And they were both primarily blockers in college. I know when... When Kane was at USC, he was a, a blocker for Charles White. William Andrews was known as a blocker at Auburn. And Coach Lehman Bennett said when he drafted Andrews, it was like drafting a, buying a Cadillac and find out it gets 25 miles to the gallon. 
Second down and three, a gain of seven. Junior Miller, their number one draft pick, has come in at tight end, replacing Russ McKeskey. A give to Kane, and Kane very close to the first down at the 15-yard line. Lynn Kane, who had a knee injury in the 10th week of the 79 season. He'd impressed everyone up to that point. Coming back this year, and when Bubba Bean went down to injury, he's now taken over that halfback spot, and that was a first down just inside the 15. Lynn Kane is very strong, and he gets a lot of yardage at the end of the play on his own with his strength. Miller remains in at tight end. A big 6'4", 235-pounder out of the University of Nebraska. Markowski on the play action on the first down. As he's man, catch is made by Miller, the man we just mentioned, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Miller's had a dislocated finger, John, that slowed his progress. It, it did. You know, those things are really painful, and it's tough for a receiver. And we'll see this first pass here on first down as a play pass where he fakes to the strong side, and then Junior Miller delays and come ac comes across to the other side. That's a good play and a good start for Junior Miller. That's the first pass that he's caught in the National Football League regular season. On the other hand, he led him in receiving in the preseason, so they really like him. Second down now. They had three wide receivers in on this play. This is Andrews to the five. John, they're using that a lot, three wide receivers. It's interesting. That's the third time that they've used the three wide receivers. I think you tend to use it early when you want to get a shot from the press box, a Polaroid shot, to see how the defense will adjust to it, and then you decide what you want to do with it later. I would anticipate that today, on all downs, we will see a lot of three wide receivers by the Atlanta Falcons. That last run just short of a first and goal. They need to get just inside the five. They're outside it. Mayberry now coming in. Andrews, Kane. Atlanta trying to capitalize on the fumble. Here's Bartkowski, and he has the first and goal. Arkowski at 6'4", 213 pounds. See, that's a pretty good man to have in there for a sneak. That is. You know, if he just falls forward, you'll get the first down. You go 6'4", you timber, and you, get, and you have the first, and I think that's what happened. So it's a first and goal inside the four-yard line, 7 to nothing. New England capitalizing on a fumble on the opening kickoff, and now, after a fumble on a running play, Atlanta trying to get even in this game. Andrews in the backfield along with Lynn Kane, Bartkowski first and goal. Andrews, Andrews is to about the one yard line. Mel Lunsford, who they have in there on running plays, they'll bring in Tony McGee and jump into a four man front quite often. They do, I was talking about Lynn Kane earlier being strong, but you know, William Andrews is equally as strong and that's one of the reasons that they can go three wide receivers or not use a lead block on short yardage because he can get it on his own. Both of them can. Both these teams showing good offense in game number one and doing it here in the second game of the 80 season. Second and goal, one yard line. This is Andrews and he's in. The ball is loose, but that does not matter. It does not matter. It's a touchdown anyway. Once you break that plane of the goal line, it doesn't matter if you lose the football. Right, it's like there's a plane of glass on the goal line, and once that's broken, and we'll see it right here, right when he gets in, once he crosses that, then no matter what happens after that, it doesn't count. Once he breaks that plane, it's a touchdown. Boy, the fans got excited, though, didn't they? They sure did. This is a big play now, this extra point. Last week, Atlanta had a penalty on their first extra point, then they missed it, and it, and it was six points, and then that stared him in the face the whole game. He came back to haunt him. And the guy that missed it, the man kicking out, Tim Mazzetti. John James holding. Mazzetti's kick is up, and Mazzetti has tied it up. It's 7-7 at the 7.48 mark, and there was some thought that this could be a real shootout. It could be a high-scoring game, and thus far in the early going, it looks that way. Well, Tim Bazzetti, John Madden, must be breathing a sigh of relief. He got that one through the uprights and tied it up. You know, and he had to remember last year, he said last year he felt like he was in the eye of a hurricane all year. After that sensational rookie year, kicking off deep, Preston Brown at the five. Brown to the 20, some running room, the 30, a flag on the play, and he's going to be out of bounds just across the 40-yard line, but a flag back at the 25-yard line. Bob Glazebrook ran him out after a 35-yard return on the play. And There's so another, let's see what this is all about. There's another example of a mistake on special teams, and 
I'm sure it's going against the Patriots, and he'll start off with very poor field position as a result of this penalty. It's a clipping call. And it's a, you know, as a coach, that used to drive you crazy. You know, I finally put in a rule. I told my men, I said, men, if you can read their name, don't block them. Well, do you have guys that couldn't read? Well, no, then I changed that. I said, if you can see their name, don't block them. You know, because we had some of those <laughs> kickers and so on with funny names. <laughs> oh. That one drives you crazy, that clip on the kickoff. You get a good return, and boom, now you're starting back there on the 12-yard line. All right, let's listen. We have clipping number 54. And so number 54 is going to be John Zamberlin, who is actually an inside linebacker, starting linebacker, is on that special team. Don Calhoun, Horace Ivory, the running backs. The ball now at the 13 after that penalty. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Grogan up to Calhoun, and Calhoun makes it to the 14. Calhoun in the place of Cunningham, who's still one of the holdouts, one of four for the New England Patriots. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. And John, that still is the story here. The group of four or the slusher four, whatever you want to call them, still not in camp. They're still not in camp. And I think as the season goes on, they'll miss them more and more. Second down, nine yards to go. Grogan deep in his own territory, but he hits Hasselbeck, who already has a touchdown catch. And that'll move it out to the 20-yard line, very close to that first down. Hasselbeck getting a lot of playing time due to the injury to Russ Francis. Al Richardson, the rookie from Georgia Tech. There's another flag, and it's going to be holding against New England. A That's the other early. one. I think the, I think the clipping that bothers you and then holding after completed passes is another one. But, you know, I always respected Steve Grogan. I, I think he's a real competitor, and there's a lot of quarterbacks that wouldn't throw from that position inside the 15-yard Holding line. number 67. That's going to be Bill Lenkaitis. You told me you thought Grogan was a five-touchdown quarterback. A five-touchdown quarterback. I always rated quarterbacks by how many touchdowns they were capable of producing in a game. Grogan is one of those that can produce five touchdowns. Horace Ivory now has come into the backfield along with Calhoun. Second down, 16. Grogan wide open, near side Morgan. Boy, that would have been a remarkable catch. Kenny Johnson, the young rookie from Mississippi State, the man they picked on last week in Minnesota. That's right. He got his first action, and I'm sure that that will help Kenny Johnson. You know, it makes you feel good if the first thing that happens is on your side. And it was, again, I admire Grogan for standing back there and throwing. You know, it's very dangerous to throw out of your end zone because not only the, you know, the safety, but if you hold in the end zone, if you have a penalty in the end zone, then it's an automatic safety, two points. Andy Very Johnson and Chuck Foreman come in on a third and 16. Well, Grogan calls, what, 90% of his own plays? Just about all of them. Third down, 16 from the seven-yard line. Grogan airing it out again. He's going deep. And this time, no chance for Morgan. Good coverage by Atlanta, and in particular, Rollin Lawrence. Believe it or not, though, there's another flag back at the five-yard line. Let's go back and pick up some of the play in the trenches. Here we watch John Hanna. You see here, in a three-man line, there's no man over him, so he has to come out and get the linebacker if he comes. And we see there, Joel Williams was coming from the outside. Holding number 74, declined, fourth down. They have to get rid of the football. We were talking about the officials working today's game. Don Wedge was to be here. He's been replaced by Dean Look, the former Michigan State quarterback. Don suffered a heart attack, and we certainly wish he and his family the very best. We sure do. Ready to find official. Hubach, back. I didn't know you liked any officials, John. Oh, a few of them. I like them all away from the game. Oh, what a kick by Hubach. Reggie Smith back to the 30-yard line. He's waiting for the wall to develop. He's still waiting, and he may go the other way. He has all kinds of running room. 45, 50. And he's going to be dropped at the 47-yard line. From high above, you could see everything developing. And Reggie Smith evidently saw that. A 25-yard return after, get this, a 65-yard kick by Hubach. That Reggie Smith is something. You know, he said that he represents all the little people. He's playing for all the little people in the world. 
They call him Super Nat. He's five foot four. And let's look at this 25 yard return. It will see. You don't like the the run back man to slow up. But I think in this case with a 65 yard punt that there is a reason he has to wait for a wall to get back here which he did. He waited for the wall on the right side. It wasn't there so he changed his field and he had a wall on this side and the left side. A very exciting player Reggie Smith. His hero was Nolan Smith who was what they called him super flea or flea. no he was Nat. He was Nat. Yeah, he was Nat. Who played for the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs. So Reggie Smith is super Nat one up. From the 46 yard line, first down. In motion, Wallace Francis. Then Kane and Kane inside the 45 to the 42. Steve Nelson, who is a nucleus of this defense, outstanding linebacker out of North, Car North Dakota State, making the tackle. He's going to bring up second down and five yards to go. This Atlanta team last week showed a lot of offense and I think more importantly John they came from behind in last week's game only to lose at the very last end with 25 seconds to go they did and offensively they're two different uh, teams one when they have good field position or good offense when they don't they don't play very well second and five Miller Miller with a first down catch and he's out of bounds at the 30 yard line Rick Sanford over there and all of a sudden junior Miller who hadn't caught a pass last week is figuring in their offense I think that's why they drafted him number one. They knew that he would figure. Uh, last week he didn't start. He didn't play as much as I'm sure he'll play today. But if not uh, today, in the ensuing weeks, we're going to see a lot of Junior Miller as a big part of this offense. He had 33 catches a year ago for Nebraska. He had 61 catches. Unbelievably, of those 61, 18 of them went for touchdowns. First down from the 30. So he's been a big play man in college. Markowski flags everywhere. Mix up on the snap that time. See everybody jumping around. That'll stop the clock with 541. 7-7 seven, seven our score. It's going to be a legal procedure against Atlanta. Somebody they, just didn't have the snap count. No, they took too much time on that. Uh, what happens, and it's a difficult thing, the Atlanta Falcons call the plays from the sidelines. They signal them in to Barkowski. Ball start, number 70. Excuse me. It, they were waiting for too much time to go <laughs> just a false start. But, but sometimes that does happen on the exchange and the and the length of time it gets to get the play in. That was Dave Scott, the left guard, a fifth year man out of Kansas. From the 35 yard line now. First down, 15 yards to go. Barkowski with nice protection. He hits Andrews and Andrews to the 29 yard line. That's back to the original line of scrimmage. Steve Nelson over there as you look at Ron Earhart, his second year as coach. He coached Steve Nelson in college in North Dakota State. He did, and I'll tell you, he's doing a fine job here at New England. I coached against Ron 15 years ago when he was at North Dakota State, and I was at San Diego State. And that was a lot of times for that college division championship. It wasn't sure it? was. Yeah, we had some big games in those days in the college level. Don Coriel was our head coach. I see where Don signed a new pack with San Diego. Seven years. Inside the 30, second down and 10. Kowski off to Kane and Kane running into some white jerseys in particular Ray Sugar Bear Hamilton eight year veteran out of Oklahoma who last week just played outstanding football he had a sack and a fumble recovery and that went over the Cleveland Browns third down nine yards to go John I think it's interesting so many teams are going to the three four but New England did it way back in 1974 they were the first team that used the the three man line is a standard defense and that they use it every play Miami had the 53 where they use it on passing situations third down eight yards to go Barkowski is three of three thus far for 23 yards beautiful protection again he has his man this is Wallace Francis to the five Francis is going to take it in Wallace Francis who had eight touchdown catches last year a 27 yarder and John for a team that's had trouble protecting their quarterback they're really doing an excellent job they did, right but now. the other thing that they did that I like here is they spread the New England defense out they had three wide receivers in there and spread the tight end they had four players spread across the field which got rid of the double coverages and as we see what happens here they forced a linebacker to cover Wallace Francis by having the four receivers on the line of scrimmage. Wallace Francis who's really come on his own out of Arkansas Pine Bluff and Mazzetti now with the point after and it's a 13 to 7 game and it's 14 to 7 
and Atlanta after starting this game off in a very shaky form fumbling the opening kickoff have roared back now and have taken the lead 14 to 7 as this game has the earmarks have been an offensive explosion before it's all over 406 remaining in this first quarter of play. Not yet. And so now Atlanta with that 14 to 7 lead. John, we want to develop that story on the group of four. As we're talking about some outstanding football players, I guess maybe Mike Haynes is the first man that comes to mention. He is the cornerback. Cunningham, Sam Cunningham, Richard Bishop, and also Tom Owen. All of them right now still in the negotiating process. You know, you know what we talk about Mike Haynes because we'll be seeing the New England defense come up here. It's when they, they have in their secondary, the Patriots uh, have four first round draft choices starting today with Mike Haynes when he comes, when and if he comes, they'll have five first round draft choices in their secondary. And so there's some talk they will start negotiating again on Tuesday in particular with Mike Haynes. This is Preston Brown, 14-7, Atlanta with the lead. Preston Brown to the 20-22 yard line. That's where New England will set it up. Ray Strong, a backup running back out of Nevada, Las Vegas over there. And you take a look now at some strategy being mapped on the sideline. This, what they're doing there is they're really showing that formation that we were talking about that, that brought the touchdown on. You see they had, and we'll see here as we go in here, they have the three wide receivers in the game, plus they had had the the tight end. They had Junior Miller split out, so they had four receivers on the line of scrimmage across the field. And it was a 27-yard touchdown catch. This is Horace Ivory. Ivory out to the 28-yard line. Ivory's the man who's had tremendous potential but always seems to be short circuited by injury Frank Reed coming up to make the stop from his strong safety spot Ivory was the number two rusher the last two years but he was on the injured reserve list last year four games right and he didn't play last week from the 28 second down and four yards to go New England having to play catch up last week they led all the way against Cleveland it out to the 30. That's Calhoun to maybe the 31. It's going to be just short of the first down. You know, the story of their game last week, uh, the Patriots, was the enthusiasm that they had in the sideline and the excitement. And uh, Of course, they were ahead the whole game, and sometimes uh, success breeds enthusiasm, and you wonder how it will go today when they're behind by seven. A lot of things said in the preseason, John, about the Patriots being emotionally dead, but they didn't show that last week, and I think that's what you're saying. It's hard to tell what they will do in a catch-up situation. Pete Brock now has come in at a center spot. This is Calhoun trying to pick up the first down on a third and one. It'll be very, very close. Had to work for it. Last week, Atlanta did an excellent job stopping the running game in Minnesota, and they're playing pretty tough today. They're going to measure to see if, in fact, he did get that first down. Mosi Tatupu came in on that play. They'll bring him in as a third back on short yardage plays. Right, and he'll play a wing, uh, like a tight end position. He plays right next to the tight end. So they have two tight ends plus Tatupu up on the line, and then there are two backs to give him an extra added blocker to the strong side. And let's see if, in fact, they did get the first down. Let's see. We'll take a little time getting the chain untangled. And it is a first down for New England. So at the 229 mark, the Patriots for the first down at the 32 yard line. 14 to 7. Atlanta on top. Hey, last week we had a lot of close games, some high scoring games, and week number two may be the same if this game is indicative at all of what's happening in the NFC and the NFL. Back to throw. Grogan has his man Ivory. Ivory, a flag is thrown. Flag thrown way after the play is over near the tackle. Ivory grounded at the 39 yard line. That would be interesting. You know, the, the, the Atlanta Falcons have three new starters on defense Joe Williams, Buddy Curry, and Al Richardson. And the one way they'll be tested is by throwing to the running backs. And that looks like what Steve Grogan is thinking of right now. 
Let's listen now. Face mask, number 58, defense, first down. That's Joel Williams, the second year man from Wisconsin Lacrosse, who was a draft pick of Miami, picked up last year and really late in the year helped him out, and they're very high on him. Young linebacking core for the Falcons. He was covering Horace Ivan. First down, 10. From the 43 yard line. Broken to Ivory. Ivory, nice cut. The ball may be loose again and is. And who has this one? Ivory did not hang on. And we're waiting on the decision as they unpile near the 45 yard line. This is the third fumble of this game. I would say that New England has it. You can always tell when the when the defense has it, they jump up and run off the field, and they all stayed there in a group, so I'm sure it's New England's ball. Sam Adams is the man who came up with it. New England cheerleaders, the spirits of New England. So from the 45, it brings up second down, still nine yards to go. Well, we've had two turnovers thus far, and they both resulted in touchdowns for the other team, so I'm sure New England's happy that they got that one back. Jeff Miro has come in defensively now for Atlanta. Grogan on the second down. Lots of time. Delivers it to Harold Jackson. Jackson hit immediately and dropped by Rollin Lawrence. And Jackson now has 502 catches in his very fine career. Tell you, that was a, a great play by Grogan because he, he waited for Jackson. As we watch the play again, it was supposed to be an in pad, and they start with a play pass. He fakes a run, comes back and watch him hold and hold. Jackson was running it in then he had to wait until he got past the defender in the middle of the field. Good shot by Grogan 18 yard pickup at the 36 of Atlanta 54 seconds to go in this first quarter. Grogan again with good protection and he hits his man Jackson again and that will be another first down inside the 30. Well wait a minute. No he's going to be short of it. Bring up second down Jackson with two catches and that now ties Billy Houghton eighth on the all time receiving list. He's a fine player. We've played against him a number of times over the years and he's always been trouble for us. It's interesting that that the Patriots are starting to work on the left side of the defense away from rookie Kenny Johnson. Wilson Famwina comes in. Merrill checks out for Atlanta defensively. That is interesting. But Johnson's relief. Second down. A long two to go. Grogan. It's Ivory and Ivory to the 31. But again, there's a flag on the play. That would be enough for the first down. With a flag thrown at the top part of the field. A lot of penalties on this particular drive. Boy, they're finding those crossing patterns open over the middle. They sure are. Well, they're doing two things. One, one, they're working the wide receiver to the right side, which would be Harold Jackson, of course, on Rollin Lawrence. The other thing is they're working the backs underneath. Offside, number 65 defense, declined, first down. That's nose tackle Don Smith. You don't see oh, those guys offside, there's do one. you? There's one. I don't know how that can happen. The nose tackle, he lines right up on the ball. He lines up over the ball. Now, how you can line up offside, I don't know, or jump offside, but I'm sure what he did, he wanted to get so close to get off that his head lined up over the ball. See, his head has to be behind the ball. So the first down, of course, they'll refuse the penalty after that completion. The 22-yard line, Calhoun. Calhoun to the 20. Good job by Calhoun to the 17-yard line. Calhoun replacing Sam Cunningham. He, along with Chuck Foreman, alternating to that fullback spot as his first quarter has come to a close. The Atlanta Falcons with a 14-7 lead here at Schaefer Stadium. With John Madden, I'm Gary Bender. We start this second quarter play, second down five for New England. They have the ball at the 17-yard line of Atlanta. They trail it 14 to 7. Ivory, Don Calhoun, the running backs. Jackson, along with Morgan, split out. Brogan at quarterback. In motion goes Harold Jackson. This is Ivory. Ivory to the 15. Oh, is he hit? But he stays on his feet somehow. Buddy Curry went flying over there. He's that young rookie out of North Carolina, their second round draft pick. And he's very impressive because he plays the run very well. He's an aggressive player. And again, he, he'll have some trouble early in the season with his pass coverage. But Buddy Curry has real instinct. And I think that's the number one thing that you look for in a linebacker. I think it's remarkable, John. He calls the defensive signals as a rookie. And he had problems with it last week. He said it, it detracted from his playing, that he was thinking 
of the signals coming in from the sideline so much that he forgot what to do when the play started. As he goes, those things will become common. He won't even think of it. Third down and two. Richardson comes out. Jim Laughlin replaced him at linebacker on a third and two. Grogan, he's going to run with it. And he has the first down. That is what makes Grogan so very difficult. He led all NFL quarterbacks in rushing a year ago. I'll tell you, he did it. He's always a threat. He's a threat when he throws it. He's a threat when he goes back to throw it. And he's all throw, also a threat when he runs with the ball. And that was an organized run. Because we'll see the leader on that play, John Hanna, the left guard, number 73, got out. And he hooked the end man on the line of scrimmage so Grogan could get outside. That was an organized quarterback sweep. And nobody can do it any better than Grogan. It's 6 4 208. And John Hanna's not bad leading it either. Last week he carried the ball three times for 23 yards. First down. Andy Johnson now in the backfield along with Calhoun. Jackson in motion. Here is Calhoun to the 10, to the 5, to the 3. You can hear the crowd chanting Calhoun. Calhoun as Andy Johnson threw a big block on this play. You see that lead block. Again, it was a weak side power play. Andy Johnson leads, gets the linebacker right there, Buddy Curry, which opens a hole in which Don Calhoun goes through and pounds down right into the three yard line. Now they're about a half yard short of a first and goal. Second down, half yard to go. Good. They have some plays to play with now as they're inside that five yard line. They get a first and goal just about at the yard and a half line. Grogan to Calhoun. And Calhoun goes nowhere on that play. Good reaction by Buddy Curry at 6'3", 221 pounds. That was a good down for a play pass. You, know, you talk about second down and a few yards. That's a great down to call a play. You know, coaches love those situations. Quarterbacks love them. And uh, I would have liked to have seen a play pass on that down, and they may have gotten an easy touchdown. Now third, it's a little tougher because now you feel that you don't have a down to play with. You have to get the first down. They don't need a touchdown, but they want to get the first down. They lost about a half yard on that. Third down and a yard to go for a first and goal. Calhoun again, and I'll tell you, I don't think he got it then, did he? No, I'm sure that he didn't get it. I don't, I don't really like that. I like the the true power as we see it here. We'll watch the Atlanta defense. The big thing you have to do is is stay low. See Buddy Curry come up here, hold the hole. The line gets penetration, and then the outside men can come. And on that play, the guy who made the tackle was the was the outside man, the corner, Rollin Lawrence. Fourth down, fourth down, and they're back to a half yard. Chuck Foreman coming in now. I wouldn't be surprised to see a play pass here. With Foreman coming in, you wonder, don't you? A fake, where it could be an option run by Grogan or pass by Grogan. That'd be a good call. Boy, Foreman is excellent in the passing game. Not a bad runner either. No, sir. He led the NFL in receiving in 75. Here we go, fourth down. Grogan on the roll. He's got blockers, and he is in for the touchdown. It He's at the one inch line, but it will be a first and goal. They do have four more downs to take it in. I thought he got inside that pylon. It was right on it. Now, the thing is, of course, it has nothing to do with the pylon. Again, he also has to break the plane on the goal line. See, he can touch the pylon with his feet, but the ball has to get across across the end zone line and it doesn't look like it did but I like this play see he has an option he can he can run or he can throw the ball here he gets out there and he decides that he'll just run as we see him go here see now the ball doesn't cross the plane of the goal line the ball goes outside out of bounds before it gets to the goal line good call but they still now have four downs to get it in that was a very <laughs> important first and goal for them it, it sure was and it was a good call Chuck Foreman was hurt on that play. He is on the near sideline being attended to. Foreman coming out. Tatupu has come in the backfield. We have Andy Johnson and Don Calhoun. First and goal at the half yard line. Calhoun, he's in. Touchdown with a flag. There is another flag on the play. Boy, he was hit in that air. That flag will go against Atlanta. I'm sure they lined up offsides and the touchdown will stay. Again. They had to really work for that. Calhoun hit hard as he tried to go airborne and couldn't quite get up and over. 
I like that play. They had motion. They brought to two point motion. He comes across, which gets some movement on the defense. Then they had the halfback Andy Johnson leading, so that gave him two additional blockers and really made a power side for Calhoun to get in. John, you know, that's where they miss Cunningham. Nobody is better at that goal line dive than he is. And short yardage blocking. Trying to tie it up now is John Smith. The flag again, believe it or not. It's good, but the penalty flag is at the three yard line. And the discussion forthcoming. So New England at this point apparently has tied it up unless they have to kick it again. It's going to go against Atlanta, I believe, and is their second consecutive offside. Right, and that one will go on the kickoff. They'll kick off and instead of the 35 Off yard line. Number 22, defense. Penalty on the kickoff. Extra point is good. I think he's listening to you up here. Well, if if he is, it would be the first time to ever listen to me. <laughs> so we're all even. 12.03 to go till halftime. There is Reggie Smith, Supernat, 5'4", 168. He's ready to take this kickoff from Hubach, 14-14. That was a 78-yard drive that time by the New England Patriots. And here comes Smith, 15, 20. Boy, he was back there. Steve King was over there. And at the 20-yard line, that's where Atlanta will set it up. Also, Bill Courier, a former Houston Oiler. That last drive was an impressive drive, John. It, took six minutes and 53 seconds. We talked earlier about Steve Grogan calling his own plays. I was impressed with the way they executed the drive, but I was also impressed with the way they called the plays and the plays that they called. When you got a guy like Grogan, he just adds a dimension, doesn't he, on that ability to run outside. That run is a real option, or the threat of a run. Now we have a little mix up. The officials on the far sideline conferring. So they'll rehuddle. Atlanta last week in that loss to Minnesota losing on a 27 yard field goal with 25 seconds to go and Lehman Bennett and visiting with him was really interested as to how his team would come back and boy early they proved they weren't going to let that setback hurt them at all. Uh, they they have it and that's always the test you know once a game's over there's nothing you can do about it you put it in a can and it's what you do the next one. Francis and Jenkins a wide receivers. For Bartkowski, that's Andrews in motion, and this is Kane with a football. Kane somehow stays on his feet and picks up three yards, and that shows you his strength. Steve Nelson made the tackle. John, you were saying that Kane must have great upper body strength. He has to have. You know, this is the second week in a row that I have seen the Atlanta Falcons. I have yet to see the initial tackler take Lynn Kane down. I have not seen that. You know, he just looks like. His upper body is of steel. When they come in to tackle him, they just seem to bounce off him. Second down seven. You know, Kane was a fullback at USC. He said he never had a chance to run wide. He always ran up the middle. No, they, they didn't let him run wide there. So it's like a new toy to him. On a second and seven, Bartkowski again. Protection is just excellent. Tries to hit Andrew. Last year, the Falcons gave up 54 sacks. That was the worst record in the National Football Conference. Last week, they gave up only one. And John, today, they are protecting Bartkowski. And I think that last down was an important down for him for their protection because they had the Patriots had their four man line in there. They had their leading sacker, number 78, Tony McGee at the left end. And right tackle Warren Bryant really did a fine job of pass protecting on him. Bartkowski four or five now for 55 yards and a touchdown. Third down, it's not one, it's third down and about seven yards to go. Big pressure put on by Tony McGee, gets away from it, Junior Miller, first down catch at the 35. And that's something that sometimes Bartkowski is criticized for, is not able to avoid that on rushing line, but he did there. He's never been accused of being very nimble afoot, and they have, you know, talked about that as a problem, but he's big and he's strong and he has a fine arm. I was just saying how Warren Bryant did such a great job on Tony McGee, and on this last play, Tony McGee went inside and ran right by Warren Bryant. Mac the sack. Tony McGee, last year with 11 and a half sacks leading the New England Patriots. His label is really apropos. He can come after the quarterback. First down catch, though, by Junior Miller, who's really played well in this first half of play. Bartkowski. And 
Good effort by Kane again. He just straightened people up and moves it to the 40. And again, showing very good strength. Yeah, that was Ray Hamilton, who weighs over 245 pounds. And you see what Lynn Kane, I think he has great balance also. And he gets down, and, and you can see his legs here. You know, you can see where his power is. It's in that backside and the and the back of his legs. And I think he gets that from the, from the drive. But he's very difficult to bring down. Steve King coming out now. Rod Schott has replaced him at the right linebacker spot. Second down and five. From the 40-yard line, Bartkowski looking. He had tried to hit Junior Miller, but it was broken up by Mel Lunsford. Miller had cleared, and the pass probably would arrive there, but number 72, Lunsford, did the job. That was Mel Lunsford in there. Now we'll see him on on Warren Bryant here and he gets up he just as Bartkowski goes back and goes to throw he jumps up you know once once a quarterback goes to throw there's no need to continue your rush it'll just go over your head you stop your rush and you go up in the air and that's what Mel Lunsford did on that play you're always telling I suppose those defensive linemen to get those hands up right when the quarterback sets and starts to throw get your hands up before he starts to throw continue to rush Third down and five. Remember now, Miller was wide open on that play, and I'm sure Atlanta's aware of that. Here's Bartkowski again, and he hits his man. The nice catch is made by Francis. He has a first down at the 50. And I'll tell you, Bartkowski had something on that football. He sure did, and he was under a little duress there because, again, he spread it out. He had the wide receiver spread out, and we'll see it here. We'll see McGee is coming from that left side. He gives him pressure. He hits him after he throws the ball, he was able to hang, hang in there and get the ball outside. That pass, you got to throw it hard, John, because if you don't, you're really setting yourself up for trouble. When he throws it hard, it doesn't stay in the air very long. <laughs> you better look quick. Tough we to defend. Had to have a replay to just see it. Just short of the 50, another first down. Atlanta continues to move the football. 14-14 our score. Nine and a half minutes to go. First half a play. The middle is Andrews, and Andrews to the 47-yard line. Andrews only carried the ball seven times last week for 35 yards. A big difference from the fact that a year ago in his first game, he gained 167 yards. He did. He ran over 1,000 yards last year as a rookie. And I think one of the reasons the formation that we're seeing a lot of today, the three wide receivers spread the defense out across the field, only one back in the backfield. They used that a lot last year, and that's a formation that Andrews made a lot of yardage on. And they're using it more today than they did last week. He's carried the ball seven times already today for 22 yards. Second down, seven. Stop the action, and Barkowski is going to talk things over, something he did not like. So he asked for the timeout. Markowski out of the University of California, his sixth year last year, throwing for over 2,000 yards, probably his best year in the National Football League. It was, and they said that he had an outstanding camp. He didn't throw an interception in the preseason, and he's starting off well this year. Atlanta using their first time out at halftime. The NFL today, Brent, Jimmy the Greek, and Irv Cross, and they're going to have a live report from Los Angeles says Jack Youngblood, the defensive end, will be visiting with Brent at halftime, so stay with us for that. Second down and seven for Atlanta. 14-14 our score. Bartkowski intended for Jackson. He got it. Alfred Jackson to the 40. Jackson to the 35, and that was a good play by Jackson who's made some big plays for this Atlanta team. That was a big play. It bounced off someone. That ball was tipped out there. You know what it'll be interesting to see as we see Adams comes here, the right end, Julius Adams. He tips the ball. Now it tips up. It's a screen pass as we see the line coming out. We see Mike Ken coming out there and blocking on Sanford to get the play started. But that was from, from Bartkowski to Julius Adams to... <laughs> Give an assist to somebody, huh? Right, to Julius Adams, to Alfred Jenkins. You know, Jackson's a guy that caught that big Ben play in 78 that beat the Saints with about 10 seconds left. Well, he's made some big plays. Andrews and Kane, the running back. First down, just inside the 35. In motion is Kane. Bartkowski delivers the ball. Junior Miller, and look at him, shed tackler. There is a flag, however, at the 30. Miller ran over some people. 24-yard pickup on the play, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Offside, New England, you know they'll refuse that. 
Is that Miller strong? He sure is. And as we watch this, is, again, there's three wide receivers in there, one back in the backfield. They faked the ball on a on a play pass. They faked the ball to William Andrews, and then he came up and threw to Junior Miller right down the middle. As we see it right here. See, it held the linebackers well, just long enough to let Junior Miller get between the linebackers and the safety. Our director, Jim Selman, on that second replay showing that Tim Fox was the guy he ran over. I mean, he didn't even stop for a second. You know, when you're 6'4 and 235, you'll run over a few safeties. So now it's a first and goal inside the 10. Barkowski's 8 of 10 now for 95 yards. A little delay, and that did not develop as Kane dropped in a hurry by Ray Hamilton. And so Barkowski now losing yardage back out to the 13-yard line. The second and goal at that point. There's the stats on Steve. He's done very well. I think what's impressed me today, and you alluded to this earlier, he's really mixed it up. He's really come out throwing to everybody and mixing his receivers up well. And the other thing that he did that you have to do against this defense is you have to throw on first down. You have to be able to throw on first down, second down, or third. You can't stereotype yourself, and he hasn't. Second and goal now from the 12 and a half yard line. 14 to 14, our score. Barkowski has time. He hits Miller again, and he's going to go in unmolested for the touchdown. He was as open as you'll ever get open. He was open. It was a play pass. It was what we call a delay. They faked both backs to the side of Junior Miller, made it look like an off tackle play. As we see it here, see both backs coming to the strong side. Miller delays and gets hit, hidden in there, comes underneath the linebackers, and two Patriot defenders pick themselves off. Boy, Junior Miller will be a big force for this team this I year. I think that's exactly right, John. I couldn't say it any better. He really has been a force in this first half. Standing play. 12-yard touchdown catch, and Mazzetti trying to give him a 21-14 lead. And Mazzetti has hit three in a row here. And so this Atlanta team, a very gritty team, Able to make it 21-14. Miller now with five catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. But if you like offensive football, this is your cup of tea here this afternoon. 21-14. Atlanta with a lead. Mazzetti to kick off Preston Brown back deep. And Atlanta has unveiled a new offensive force here this afternoon in Junior Miller. Here is Preston Brown, and he's having problems, and he's not going to bring it out. He has to bring he it out. He came across the goal line. He came across the goal line That's and went right. back. He did, and he, he, he stepped on the goal line. The ball was across the goal line. You can't leave it there. If you get it in the end zone, you don't have to bring it out. But if it's on or outside the goal line, you can't go back in. Well, he almost was tackled for a safety. It looks like he just got out. Boy, that is a good lesson for any young person going back and fielding a kickoff. Sure is. We talked about special teams, and this has happened. You can't have those mistakes on special teams. So it will either be it will either be a safety, or, or if he got out, the ball will be right there on the goal line. That's what it is. It's on the goal line, John. Let's look at our replay now and see what Preston Brown, in fact, did. Watch this One now. One thing we'll see right here. See, when he catches the ball, Right there, that's okay, but the ball goes outside. You see the ball there? It hits the goal line. Now he steps on the line. Now he has to bring it out. See, he's not sure what to do. He's looking at the official, and the official's not going to tell you what to do. If he's tackled in there, it's two points. Right there, he gets the ball out just over the goal line. Boy, what a fast and furious development that is. And now New England trying somehow to slug it out of there. Ivory carries it. You know, the interesting that official <laughs> kind of just stared him back, didn't he? He said, you do what you want to do, young uh, man. I'm sure the official knew, but uh, he wasn't going to tell. Well, when he didn't blow the whistle, Brown very alertly then did take off, but not very far. Second down, he got it out to about the one-yard line. Second down, nine yards to go. 21-14, Atlanta with the lead. New England with a real struggle on their hands here. They came in, favorites in this game. Here's Calhoun. He may have gotten a yard. Good reaction. You can see this Atlanta team is fired up. That was Al Richardson, the real rookie surprise out of Georgia Tech. They are fired up, and this is a very big play here because a couple things can happen. One, if they hold them here, they know that they'll get good field position. But number two is with the ball on the two-yard line, 
the normal drop for the punter is 15 yards. You see, now he only has 12 yards, so he has to punt closer than he's normal to. If they can hold him on this down within a three-yard space, that will throw their punt timing off. Big play. You think Groh going to put it up? I wouldn't be surprised. Chuck Foreman has come back into the backfield. Here he goes. He's on end zone. He has a man open. Andy Johnson, and they have a first down. Andy Johnson with a big clutch catch for New England. And they get out of a very precarious situation. They sure did. And I'll tell you one thing. As we look at Steve Grogan there and we watch a play again, there's not a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football League that would throw this pass. I'll tell you, he did it. He not only threw it well and got the first down, but that can change the complexity of this game. And at the 14-yard line now, the Patriots breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. They have a little room to breathe. That's right. 545 remaining until halftime. 21-14, the Falcons, a surprise leader here in this first half, playing in the backyard of New England, Calhoun nowhere. And again, John, Atlanta is playing the run very, very tough. They sure are, and I think that we're seeing what is happening when you get those three young active linebackers in there. Again, I'm talking about Al Richardson, a rookie, Buddy Curry, a rookie, Joe Williams, a second-year man, three players that really know how to fly and converge to the football. Remember the main Junior Miller, too, on offense. Not You're going to hear a lot about him. Second down, nine yards to go. Brogan going to throw with a lot of time, but he could not hit his man Jackson. A little behind him that time. You can see, John, the linebackers really getting big drops on that play. They were really backpedaling in a hurry. They are, and it was, a, it was an experience thing. Last week, Minnesota Vikings tried to do the same thing as we'll see the play again here. Again, it's a play pass. You see, he fakes to the backs, coming to the strong side, trying to hold the linebackers, keep them up line. This time, they didn't go for it. You see, and uh, again, he tried to hit Jackson, but the linebackers covered the tight end and did a good job on it. Grogan now, six of nine for 58 yards and a touchdown. Foreman, Johnson, the running backs, third down, nine yards to go. Again, protection is there. And he got his man at the 31, no. Trying to come up with it was Hasselbeck. He had it momentarily, and that will bring up a punting situation. They have to punt, but they're in a lot better position to punt now than they were before. When you get backed up in your goal line, the punters in the end zone, there's not much oxygen down there. <laughs> not to mention room. This is Hubosh, who kicked one 65 yards the last time. I think he'd like to order another one up like that. The Supernat is back for Atlanta. He'll be kicking into what wind there is, and the wind at times blowing pretty well here out of the south. And they're going to get a new football in now. What's happened there, John? Well, he has a stance. You know, he's not very tall, and then he gets in that little squat, and he makes himself shorter. Difficult target for the center. He's 5'10". The man who replaced Eddie Hare was about 6'3 or 4". That's not a very good kick, and it's fielded short for the fair catch. I don't believe that's going to happen very often. As Bob Glazebrook, number 36, a safety, I don't think he could believe the ball was coming to him, but he got it after only a 27-yard kick. Well, New England that time getting only a 27-yard kick from Hubach, kicking into this wind. It might have held up the punt a little bit after Hubach earlier had a 65-yarder from the 41. Atlanta with the lead, and Lynn Kane and William Andrews in the backfield behind Bartkowski. Good protection again, broken up in midair, Hamilton. Hamilton close to the ball. Now, whether he hit it or not, it might have been Mike Hawkins. But again, Bartkowski with time to throw the football. He did have time to throw the football, and that's the third of his passes that has been tipped today, either by a defensive lineman or, in one case, a linebacker. In this last case, it was linebacker Mike Hawkins. Sugar Bear Hamilton trying to get back there like a defensive back to pick it up. But that's okay. Those guys can't catch it anyway, so you don't have to worry about, <laughs> about nose tackles catching passes. <laughs> if they ever do, they sure get thrilled, though. I'll bet. Jenkins, Francis, split out. Second down, 10 from the 41. 21-14, the Falcons with the lead. Bartkowski, beautiful protection. He gets it off to Andrews. 40-35, Andrews at the 32-yard line. That was quite a block by Warren Bryant, the big offensive tackle, and a man shaken up, Mike Hawkins, for the New England Patriots. Well, see, this is a good call. Again, 
I like a screen pass on first or second down. I've never liked it on three, but see, they let the line come. Andrews sneaks up underneath. We see the big tackle out there. Warren Bryant, number 66, making a lead block, and it's close to a first down. Hawkins is still down at the 36-yard line. But again, what Atlanta has, John, and Andrews and Kane are two fine backs coming out of the backfield to catch the football. They do, and if you get deep and if you're thinking of Alfred Jenkins and Wallace Francis, then they, then they do have. They have the backs coming out. They have the screen passes, the back short. And now, of course, they have the additional thing in Junior Miller. And, and when they get Junior Miller going, which they're doing now, plus the outside receivers and the backs, they... They have a real, a real thing that can cause a lot of problems. You know, defensive coaches don't sleep too much when <laughs> they Not play to these mention people. any coach, huh? Well, head coaches, they never sleep anyway. Look at this, Philadelphia leading Minnesota. We mentioned the Vikings and Tommy Kramer at the top of the show. The Jets trailing Buffalo. Buffalo beating Miami last week, ending that 20-game losing streak to the hands of Don Shula, one of your good friends. Is it? He's a good friend, and I think he's a he's a great coach. That's obvious, but he's one of the finest that's ever coached the game. Just short of the first down. Third down, a half yard to go. Hawkins is replaced by rookie Larry McGrew at linebacker. Markowski to Kane. Kane gets a block from Andrews, and he got the first down and then some. To the 22-yard line, but Andrews threw a great block at the start of that play that gave Kane time to pick up 10 yards. So we'll see that block in that run, and we'll see Andrews here in the lead block just takes a man right down, and Lynn Kane waits, then he's by, and again, I said no one person this year has tackled Lynn Kane. Now, he doesn't look spectacular. He's not your O.J. Simpson, your O.J. Anderson, but Lynn Kane is something in his own. He's kind of a pick-and-choose runner, isn't he? He just keeps darting around and bouncing off of people. Chooses defenders to run over sometimes. Going to start running the other way from the 22. First down after that 10-yard run by Kane. Markowski on first down. All kinds of time to throw. Miller again. He has another touchdown catch. 22 yards. And John, you said you need to throw on first down, and that's what Bartkowski did. You have to throw on first down. New England has a fine defense. They play the run on first down very hard. And what he did on this pass is he faked he faked a run first. He faked to William Andrews. Again, that held the linebackers in. And then Junior Miller, as we'll see it again, we see the fake to Andrews. Now Junior Miller was able to get behind the linebackers, as we see right there, and in front of the secondary. See, and it just goes over the head of, of number 54, John Zamberlin. Boy, a tight end like Miller can do a lot of things for an offense. His second touchdown catch, one of 12, now of 22 yards. Mazzetti and this crowd here in New England is stunned as now the Atlanta Falcons have jumped up to a 28 to 14 lead and they have done it in most impressive fashion. And one of the reasons is Miller who has six catches now for 89 yards and two touchdowns. And one of the other reasons is Steve Bartkowski and I think a third reason and maybe the biggest reason in the difference this week than last week is the play calling. I like their mixture much better. Last week they were running on first down more. They were running on second down. Then they would get in those long yardage situations to pass. This time, they're, as you mentioned earlier, they're mixing it up all the time. Very, very impressive. Look at these stats, John. Bartkowski's 11 of 14, 138 yards and two touchdowns. Missing on only three, and what? Two of those were deflected, I think, in the defensive line. You were saying earlier about the excitement that we'll have in the National Football League this year, and we had it the first week. We're having it here again today, and I think we'll have it throughout the year. As a result of those new rules, they can't bump after five yards. Now it's a true passing and receiving, and the game is evolving into quarterbacks and receivers. I think interesting this year was in the preseason, the NFC won that battle with the AFC 22, 20, and 4, first time in four years. And last week, the NFC did very well against the AFC, and here today it's happening. Preston Brown won't bring this one out. There's Bartkowski. And Bartkowski, those touchdown passes for 138 yards, talking things over with Andrews. He doesn't even have a smile on his face yet. That's good. That's good because you don't smile until you go into the locker room after the game. <laughs> I like that. I don't like to see him smiling in the first half. I think we said Bartkowski had two touchdown he has three touchdown passes three touchdown passes and his name hardly fits on his jersey <laughs> when you throw the ball it doesn't matter right it could have any name Francis caught one earlier and of course Miller with two 
Here's Grogan back to throw on a first down. He hits Jackson, and Jackson is belted very hard on the near sideline. He had to kind of wait a little bit on that ball, and Lawrence really teed off on him. He sure did, and I think we'll really see an aerial show today as we see Grogan get back here, throw the ball, and get it to the outside, because once the other team, now that the Patriots are two touchdowns down, now Grogan will start throwing, so we'll see a real aerial. Look at this tackle here. This catch was the 504th of Jackson's, moving him into seventh on the all-time list, moving ahead of Billy Houghton, who's a fine wide receiver. Sure 504. Was. He's going for the top, he told us prior to the game. going to be number one. Grogan back on a first down. This is Morgan at the 50-yard line. He is enveloped in a hurry. Lawrence, and all of a sudden now the Patriots are on the move. 17-yard pass completion. As we see, if you don't envelop Stanley Morgan very quickly. He can take that ball, as we said earlier, and he can break anything with it. Look, look at Grogan hang in there. Just as he was throwing the ball, he, get, he gets hit. Rollin Lawrence really had good coverage on that play, but it was a fine throw and a fine reception by Stanley Morgan. There's Lehman Bennett. He has to be happy thus far, leading by two touchdowns. Grogan back, 224 left in the first half. Calhoun, and he can't hang on. A good shot that time on the near sideline. Good defensive play by Reed, but there's a flag at the 41 yard line. That'll be a penalty. That catch was good, but that'll be a penalty against the Atlanta Falcons defense, I'm sure. You, that again. was a catch a while ago? I'm surprised. I'd like to look at that again. Let's see. I well, guess I see the official is standing there, and he has the ball mark, so I'm, I'm sure that they counted that as a catch. Whether it was good or not, we'll, we'll see. see right here now. But again, it's academic because the penalty was against the Falcon. Yeah, golly it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Those officials are right on those calls. They don't make too many mistakes. But as you That's mentioned, the penalty. Let's listen. Illegal chuck. Illegal contact, number 54, defense, first down. That's the reason they'll take it, not the distance as much as just the first down, the automatic, automatic first down. Automatic first down, and again, the rule is, we just saw an example of the rule that is really responsible for all this passing in the National Football League. After a pass receiver runs five yards, he cannot be touched by a defender. And that means those guys in the secondary better be quick. First down. Grogan, as we have 2.18 to go in the first half, hits Foreman, and Foreman will go out of bounds at the 37. And now Grogan really opening up. He's in his two-minute offense, and Grogan, when he's in the two-minute offense, he can drive you batty. He can drive you batty anytime because he can always, you know, throw the ball. He mixes it around. He throws it to his backs, to his tight end, although Russ Francis isn't playing today. He throws it to his wide receivers. You finally get that figured out, then he runs against you. Second down three. You see Pete Brock is in at center. What they're doing now is Lincaitis will play the first quarter, Brock the second. They'll change back again in the second half of play. Alternating at center. Brogan 9 of 13 for 96. Foreman. And Foreman dropped at the 32-yard line. That will be enough for the first down. Joel Williams making the tackle. Foreman's a new man here, John. He came in weighing about 211 pounds, losing around 28, 29 pounds. He did. You know, and I was talking to Chuck yesterday, and he said, you know, he said, I'm not just a pass receiver. And he was talking to the coach. He said, I want to I want to run the ball also. So I'm sure he was glad with that last play where he got his first chance to run. Toyota Celica Super is life in the fast lane that's almost beyond belief. But the Super is not the only way to join the fast crowd. There's a now classic sporty Celica GT Coupe and the GT Liftback. And for those who would like a sporty Celica for a little less money, there's the ST, the lowest price Celica. To find out which one's for you, drive a Celica. Then just trust your feelings. Oh, 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 what a a Celica selection. Toyota. When Europeans get together with friends, they serve their wine in a carafe. Thanks to Paul Masson, we can enjoy this same tradition. Paul Masson's convenient carafe, sealed fresh at the winery to capture each wine's delicious flavor. Whether it's Paul Masson's delicate, crisp Chablis, rich, mellow Burgundy, or delightful rosé, the Paul Masson carafe. The time has come for this great way to serve a great wine. 
Tuesday, the Dukes of Hazard star in a special two-hour TV movie presentation, Carnival of Thrills. The action never quits. Be there Tuesday at 8, 7, Central and Mount. We've just completed the two-minute warning now at halftime at the NFL today. Jack Youngblood, the Rams, of course, not playing today as they played Thursday night. Jack Youngblood will be visiting live with Brent Musburger on the NFL today. Two minutes remaining in this one, in this first half. From the 32, it's a first down for New England. They trail 28-14. Had a dandy football game as of right now. New England with 13 first downs. Atlanta with 12. Grogan just got rid of the ball to Foreman. And Foreman knocked out of bounds at the 25, a gain of five. Al Richardson came storming through, and Grogan having to throw that ball in a hurry. And that was the only thing that he can do because I think that Al Richardson was supposed to have been blocked by Chuck Foreman. So Foreman doesn't block him. No one blocks Richardson. So the only man that, that Grogan can go to is the man that didn't make the block, Chuck Foreman. So if you're going to miss a block or forget to block someone, then you better catch a ball and get him off the hook, which he did. Foreman's really good at that, too, running to an open spot, getting open when your quarterback's in trouble. A gain of eight, second down and two. Boy, the Falcon linebackers drop back five yards. Now they, as you can see, jump right back up on the line of scrimmage. They're really moving around. The this is Andy. Blitz. <laughs> Here is Andy Johnson to the 22. That'll be a first down. At Grits Blitz, they would send those guys a couple of years ago, all 11 of them. They did. They don't do it as much, but they still have it in their arsenal, and it's something that the opponents always have to prepare for. We see we're down to 136. Now, that's plenty of time because the Patriots still have their timeouts, and what they would like to do is get a score in here before halftime, but not get a score too soon that they let Atlanta have the ball again because they're having trouble on defense. So from the 22, the clock shows 118, a first down, Grogan. A little bit of pressure again, Jackson touchdown. There are two flags on the play, but Harold Jackson loose. Cut the ball. Let's see what the penalty's all about. I believe it is going against New England. It'll go against New England. The officials are coming back and talking about it, but I'll tell you, you still have to admire Brogan here. You watch him come back. He's getting a, a big push here in the middle. He has to throw just as he's getting hit, and he not only throws, but he throws right on the spot for a touchdown. That's a great pass. It's a great catch also. Well, it won't count. It'll come back, but uh, it was still a super play. Russ Francis is clear down there arguing with the official. He's not playing. Let's listen to this. Interference, number 29, offense. Well, that's Jackson. He pushed off to get open. You know, the rule on that is now the defender can't touch him after five yards. But by the same token, if the defender has a position on you, you have to go around him. You can't go into him or through him. Well, that's a 10-yard penalty, and it's now first and 20 from the 32-yard line. The time, 1-12 remaining. The score, 28-14 Atlanta. Grogan, up to Johnson. Johnson to the 30. 35 and goes out of bounds. That stops the clock with 106. He gets some of that yardage back, about five of it. Frank Reed over there. So they'll have a second down, still 15 yards to go. Johnson, a very fine football player, but he, like Ivory's, had a history of injuries. And He's so a fine athlete. And as you say, on that down, on first down, Steve Grogan was just trying to get some of the yardage back. Now, he still has, he still has two more downs to get the ball up for a first down. With 106 and three timeouts, that's plenty of time. The line of scrimmage just outside the 25 on the second down. Grogan, that blitz is picked up beautifully. Wide open is Morgan. Now, that was an interesting development. He and Kenny Johnson were playing handsies on that far side, and all of a sudden he pushed off and was wide open. Well, I think Kenny Johnson was playing the hook. It was either supposed to be a hook by Stanley Morgan, and he decided to go deep, or it was a hook and go where he faked a hook and went. Now, again, Kenny Johnson had the position there. That wasn't. The fans are booing here, but uh, if we could see that again, we, we would see that Kenny Johnson is in the position that Stanley Morgan had to go through him. They just ran into each other there for a moment, and the crowd feeling that possibly he was interfered, but it was, as you mentioned, a stop pattern of some type. It was either a stop pattern or, or a stop and go pattern. So it's third down now and 14 yards to go. Grogan with time. 
He has a man, Morgan. Touchdown, New England. Stanley Morgan, a 25-yard touchdown strike. And John, he did a remarkable job getting both feet in bounds. I tell you, he did a remarkable job of running the pattern. He did a remarkable job of the catch. And we'll see the play again here. It's a fake, a fake blitz as Grogan go back. Grogan was hit as or after he threw the ball. And he limped off the field. And look at this throw, throw here. It's right on the money. It has to be because the coverage of Kenny Johnson really wasn't that bad. One foot in. Ooh, oh, oh that second foot was not in. You know, that, uh, that official did take time to call that. We see Steve Grogan. He limped off the field. He got hit. Boy, I tell you, Jim Selman will put it up again, I'm sure. We'll look at that last play. Grogan coming off the field, but I don't believe, John, he had both feet in. Well, no, he didn't have both feet in. Uh, you know, again, they, you know, both feet at the same time. When you get the ball, it looked like he had one foot. That second step went out of bounds. All right, we're going to look at it again. You see the score now, 28-21. You take it, John. And you know, I don't know that I've seen two quarterbacks pass better in one quarter than Steve Grogan here and Steve Bartkowski had. We'll see right here at the end. Now, as we'll see right here, when he catches a ball, he has he has a step on Johnson. We we'll see he has a ball now. There's one. one foot, second foot out. No, that shouldn't have been good. Well, do they even up in the course of a year? I think they do, but you can't tell Atlanta that right now. <laughs> That was an 80 yard drive and nine plays taking only two minutes and 11 seconds. We have another man shaken up. And that was a great shot by our cameraman down there to to have that reception and that in that shot of the feet. Number 52 if that's who that is maybe that's Dwight Wheeler though that's 62. The offensive tackle and Wheeler's the guy who's been trying to replace Leon Gray only to have injuries slow his progress. And that's who it is, Wheeler coming off. But to go back to that last play, it again shows me how Grogan can move a team. He moved them 80 yards in two minutes, 11 seconds, still had 55 seconds left on that clock. We've had, we've had great passing in this game. Here's the kick. Smith coming up on the short kick. Look out. What's he doing? The ball is loose, and it's out of bounds. Atlanta, fortunately, will have it. I don't know what Reggie Smith was trying to do at five foot four. He was trying to receive the bounce. You have to catch those kickoffs on a fly. Now they were in an onside prevent in that they had nine men up on the line of scrimmage. And John Smith kicked the ball deep, uh, uh, not deep, he kicked it over the front line and between the deep line where Reggie Smith is. Reggie Smith's problem was he lined up too deep in an onside prevent. What you're you better off you just knocking up. that ball out of bounds in a situation right. like that or just feeling it but you line up more shallow because if it goes into the end zone then you leave it there you know another thing John the clock did not start on that play there's still 55 seconds showing the officials are talking about it now and I'm sure that's what they're talking about that no time ran off the the clock and again the clock in the last two minutes doesn't start doesn't start until it's fielded on this in the last two minutes until it's touched. Let's listen. Kickoff out of bounds. Last touch by the kicking team. Re-kick. Five yards. You see it here. It goes over his head. See, now the clock won't start until someone touches it. If they haven't touched it, and then, then they touch it right there. So the clock should have started there. It was last touched by the kicking team, so they'll kick it over. we we'll see, because no one got control of the ball before it went out of bounds but and they have to have control excuse me the clock doesn't start until someone has what control would happen though so that he, clock was right okay what would happen then John if you just batted the ball out of bounds would that would you have possession there or they it would be right if the, I'm talking about the, you team would if the other team didn't touch yeah. it see, okay so the kicking team did touch it before it went out of bounds but didn't have control of it had they had control of it it would be their ball Smith see, kicking off again to Smith and he's going to go out of bounds this time it's out of bounds I'll tell you height hurts you in a lot of ways <laughs> and on that last kickoff a lack of height really had to hurt Reggie Smith he just at five four couldn't get up high enough he tried to jump it looks like Grogan's okay uh, you know he's he's walking around there and he looks like his and his eyes look good <laughs> he looks like he's happy so uh, I'm sure he's okay. Look at the stats on him. As you mentioned, two quarterbacks really putting it together in this first half of play. 51 seconds quarter. left. 
51 seconds left to go. Let's see if Atlanta just kills the clock now with Francis and Jenkins wide. In motion, that's Russ McCuska now at a tight end. No, sir, they're going to throw it. Barkowski to Andrews. Andrews, the 30, a flag on the play as he makes it to the 35-yard line. It's going to be about three yards short of the first down. There's a flag on the play, and Steve Bartkowski took a timeout. I bet he wish he had that one back if, in fact, he were going to try and work the ball down the field because the penalty stops the clock anyway, so he didn't have to take the timeout. It's holding against Atlanta. Here's Anders again showing some pretty good footwork. That will be brought back. Ten yard penalty now with 42 seconds. I would imagine Atlanta now be content just to kind of kill this one. I'm sure that they'll be content to run the clock Illegal out. Use of hands, number 87 offense. That's McKeska the tight end who's in there. He hasn't played a lot because Junior Miller has just been first unreal down. in this first half. Junior Miller continues to play like he's been playing. McKeska won't play a lot. <laughs> first and 20. 28, 21. Atlanta with the lead. Andrews now just out to the 20 yard line. So the timeout is going to be called. They'll stop the clock. New England liked to somehow get a hold of this football with 35 seconds remaining. That was a timeout that was taken by New England. They have their three timeouts. I'm sure that they're thinking if they can stop them on, on these next two downs and maybe force one punting situation and try and get a block or one big play before the half is over, it is a way that they could tie it up before halftime. Number 70 in there now for it's starting really getting, to rain. Yes, it is. I just started to say, well, are we getting some rain now? <laughs> well, really starting are, to come around. Fans are starting to get the umbrellas up, and all of a sudden, it's just started to pour here. Started to say, the way things are going in this game, we're going to have a lot of offense, but all of a sudden, with this rain, that might change things in a hurry. Well, it could, but I don't think in this field. One, I'm not really a, a, a fan of artificial turf, but I'll say one thing for this field here in Foxborough is it does have very good drainage, and, and they can get the water right off it. Doesn't look that dark around here, but it's sure raining. Second down now, 16 yards to go. As we come to the final 35 seconds of the first half, here is Kane, and Kane just about to the 24. They never did get him down. <laughs> and that's been the story of his career. He is tough to get down. A little shoving in there now. I don't know. You know, he played at USC for my friend John Robinson. John coached with me at Oakland. We grew up together. And John told me about Lynn Kane. He said he's your type of running back. You ought to draft him. I retired, never had a chance. John never gave me anything before that, but when I retired, he told me about Lynn Kane. He was right. So now another timeout used by New England. They have one remaining. You see the time, 15 seconds. The NFL today at halftime. Jack Youngblood, who has rejoined the Los Angeles Rams, but the Rams 0-2 in the early going. Interesting thing about the division Atlanta's in, John, is the fact that in the first week of the season, only one of those teams won out there, and that was San Francisco. San Francisco, and I think that, that playing that Thursday night game for, for the Rams at this time, having all those players having missed training camp may be an advantage because they get, you know, 10 days off there that they can have a little added training. And they may be more ready to play and in better condition to play when we get down there to do the Los Angeles Ram Green Bay game. Well, the Rams, as you mentioned, you have a guy who thinks he's in shape, but he's not really in shape until he gets into camp and starts hitting people. It's not the same. Third down, 14. 13 seconds left as Andrews out to the 26 yard line. Check that, Lynn Kane. And there's the time as New England will use their last timeout to stop it with nine seconds left. This will be interesting here. There's nine seconds left. Uh, really, the ball will, will stop. I mean, the clock will stop a change of possession, so you get an automatic timeout there. Uh, I wonder if Atlanta would, would, would run a fake and not take the chance of punting the ball in this situation. The only way that New England can really do anything is by blocking the punt. So I'm sure we'll see 10 men up on the line of scrimmage coming after the punt. They can even afford a roughing the kicker in this situation. James has kicked only once in this game. John James for 39 yards. He's a veteran. And 
That's just what they probably discussed. Exactly what you said as Preston Brown goes back. Nine seconds left in a very entertaining first half of play. Atlanta with a 28-21 lead. It all started with less than a minute gone. Opening kickoff was fumbled. Patriots scored, and from then on, it's been an explosion. Here's James from the 12-yard line. Preston Brown gonna let it hit. And that takes a very fortuitous bounce for Atlanta all the way inside the 15 to the 11. And that will end the first half of play. And so the Atlanta Falcons, who last week put 23 points on the board, have come back in on this first half and scored 28 points, showing they have a very fine offensive team. They sure do, and I'm impressed with their defense today, too. They're playing the, the run very well. Those linebackers doing a fine job. We talked about Bartkowski. This is as, as, as well as I've ever seen Steve Bartkowski play a half. Uh, but one of the big things of that is the addition of Junior Miller. They thought that. They drafted him number one, the seventh player taken. And he's really shown why in his first half. He has just been outstanding. On the other hand, New England, there's a team that you just can't get enough points to stay ahead of them. 28-21, Atlanta. Here's our halftime score at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, 28 to 21. And if you are a fan who likes passing, well, we had a lot of it in the first half, John Madden, as we've just compiled the figures here. In the first half, 290 yards in total offense as far as passing is concerned, 23 of 31, five touchdowns. That's very impressive. And, of course, that's both quarterbacks combined, both uh, teams combined. The impressive thing is not only how well that they've thrown the ball, but there, there's been a great pass rush, and both of these quarterbacks have shown toughness. We talk about toughness of defensive linemen and offensive linemen, but both of these quarterbacks have hung in there and thrown well under adversity. In this game, the rushing stats are not all that impressive. Atlanta leads with 60 as opposed to 51 for New England. Well, you know, really, neither defensive team has stopped the other's passing yet, so there's not a need for running. And I think it may become in the second half or maybe in the fourth quarter running may become an important part of the game and a team that can run the best and control the ball may end up winning this game. Well and of course we have a weather factor coming in here. It started raining with about two minutes to go in the first half. You know but one thing about artificial turf and I said before I never did like it but it does dry a lot easier than natural grass. But you can see that both quarterbacks hitting a remarkable percentage. 12 of 17 for Grogan. Bartkowski, 11 of 14. And Atlanta came into this game. I think a lot of people felt that they were really going to have a tough time staying equal with New England. But they approved in this first half of play that their offensive output of a week ago was no fluke. As they've come right back in here against this fine Patriots team to score 28 points in the first half. Mazzetti will be kicking off. It's continuing to rain. It did not look that dark when it started raining, but now it's starting to get more and more that way. And you can see some of the fans, uh, what do we call, adapting to the when weather. That one fellow there adapted by taking his shirt off. Mazzetti will kick off. Preston Brown, who had kind of a shaky moment in that first half when he almost did not bring a kickoff out. Back again for the Patriots. The Patriots winning last week. Atlanta losing a heartbreaker. Like to pull even at one and one. Patriots will head all the way out west to meet Seattle while Atlanta returns home for the first time this year. Since the preseason, they play host to the Miami Dolphins. Mazzetti is ready. Mazzetti kicking very well, hitting four of four point afters after missing one, a very big one, a week ago in Minnesota. And Mazzetti gets into this one very well. He's been kicking off effectively, as evidenced by that one. Preston Brown won't bring it out. And New England will have it at the 20-yard line. Mazzetti's kickoffs have been impressive this year, uh, this week and last week. And 
That's always an addition to your defense. When you know that the other team has to start on the 20-yard line when you kick the ball into the end zone, that's a plus. Steve Grogan, 12 of 17 in the first half. Two touchdowns from the 20-yard line. Going to check now offensively. They had some people shaking up. The White Wheeler is back in there. He was shaken up just before the end of the first half. He's back in at left tackle. Calhoun and Ivory, the running backs. Jackson in motion. This is Ivory. Big move, but Kuykendall is there. Fulton Kuykendall, who's really a fine football player. One on one stop that time. Yes, and we'll see the defense swarm here. We we'll see Buddy Curry coming across. The two inside linebackers, Fulton Kuykendall there, he'll come up and make the tackle. There was no place to go. He started inside, tried to bounce. There was nothing inside, tried to bounce outside, nothing out there. The thing they say about Kuykendall, he plays every down like it's his last one. Rushing the left. Maybe a half yard loss on the play. Broken. Protection there. Tried to hit Morgan at the 38 yard line, but covered pretty well. And again, a pretty good rush. We. We talked about the passing that we had in the first quarter, and we were saying that the rush was there. They, they haven't really got there in a sack, but it's been close. It's been pushing. It's been in the quarterback's face, and we just had another example of that by Jeff Merrill. Andy Johnson now in there with Chuck Foreman. You see a lot of role playing in football now, don't you? Particularly at the offensive backfield spots. It's getting to be a real specialist game. Three wide receivers, running backs for run and pass. Third down. Virtually 10 yards to go. 28-21 Atlanta with a lead. Grogan having a little trouble with his footing. Trying to roll out to the 20, 25. He has a first down to the 35 to the 38-yard line. Steve Grogan somehow got out of all that difficulty and went 19 yards for a first down. And there's a flag on the play, Gary, but we'll see the play again. When Grogan ran, ran with the ball, usually a quarterback See, he's flushed out of the pocket. It's not a run. He sidestepped there. He outruns the defender there. Now you expect him to step out of bounds. He turned back into the inside, and I think that was the biggest fake of anything. Most quarterbacks, after they get the first down, turn outside or step out of bounds. He went back against the grain and picked up another 10 yards. And boy, he went down to protect himself very efficiently. Well, that penalty is against Atlanta. So they'll have the first down. Let's listen to Fred Wyatt. Holding, number 28, defense, added to the end of the run, first down. Frank Reed, well that moves the ball out to the 44 yard line. That had to be holding because you can't have pass interference when the quarterback runs. That's what it was, Ivory and Calhoun, the two running backs, Jackson goes in motion, Reed over there to pick him up. Grogan to Calhoun, and Calhoun looked like he's gonna go the other way for a moment. Gets a yard to the 45-yard line. Calhoun has really been a very good fireman-type runner. They bring him in, always seemingly doing the job for him. He's not that big, six foot, 212 for a fullback. He's had six 100-yard days in his career. Going to bring up second down and nine. Don Calhoun has also played halfback. Uh, you know, if the fullback were hurt, he would go in and play fullback. If the halfback has hurt, he played halfback. He's been a a very valuable player for the Patriots over the years. And a free agent in 1975. That's how they picked him up. Second down and nine. Just underway, second half. Grogan, protection excellent. Throwing to Morgan. Johnson is there. Kenny Johnson, the rookie who was burned last week, that time played Stanley Morgan hip to hip. He, he did, and he was in a good position there to Make an interception. One thing, we had great passing in the first half, but we also had great pass protection. Watch John Hanna here. He's free in the, th the three-man line, and when someone gets free or starts to get free, that big guy's there to bump him off. Well, Kenny Johnson really has acquitted himself well in this game, John, after a long Sunday a week ago. Well, that's the important thing. You know, Kenny Johnson said that if you've never been beaten as a corner, you've never played corner. New England now, the third down. They've made six of eight third downs in this game. Third down and nine. Grogan's going to be dropped this time. Coming up fast was Mike Seeley, number 63, out of Kent State. He's a backup to Don Smith at nose tackle, but he's played very well last Steve week in Grogan, particular. 
Steve Grogan fumbles the ball here, starts to go down, throws it to the umpire. The umpire didn't work back enough and caught it on one bounce. Had he worked back, he could have caught that ball and taken it into the end zone. Bad hands. Hubach to kick. The super net. Reggie Smith is back. Hubach hits this one well. Smith at the 20. To the 25 and out of bounds. He's upset. He wanted some running room and couldn't find it. 46-yard kick that time by Hubach. And so Atlanta stops New England on their first offensive series. They have the football for the first time. 12.47 to go, third quarter. They lead it by seven. Atlanta with the football in the lead. The first time they've had the football in the second half. It stopped raining here at Schaefer Stadium. The sky is starting to get a little bit brighter. And this crowd very vocal right now. 12.47 to go, third quarter. Bartkowski to Kane. Kane somehow gets out of that difficulty out to the 40 for the first down. He fumbled the ball. Who has it? Atlanta has recovered their own fumble. But John, what an outstanding run by Kane. Looked like he had a disastrous situation. It was a different formation. He was the only back in the backfield. Andrews was up as a wing. It was a pitch they tried to get outside. We saw Mel Lunsford there did a good job of containing. So Lynn Kane just stopped, cut right back against the grain, and again made the first down. You don't like what happened at the end there, but the Falcons got the ball. Warren Bryant, you see him, number 66. He saved the football. They That's pick right. up 16 yards on the play. Moves it out to the 43. So Atlanta picking up where they left off in that first half, showing again the ability to move the football. Bartkowski going on first down again. And that's Jenkins. Did he get it? Alfred Jenkins, no. They're ruling that he did not hang on or did not get it before it hit the turf. Let's look at it again. A flag, by the way, on the play. Yeah, a flag on the play, and I'm, I would say it's probably against the Atlanta Falcons. We'll see this play again. You see right here, Jenkins is doing a good job of running the end under control, but the ball hit the ground right in front of him. I would imagine we're going to have holding coming up against Atlanta the way they're backing up. And it's probably against Warren Bryant if it is holding. It was called by the official on the side, and he keys the tackle closest to him. So if it is, in fact, holding, it'll be against Warren Bryant, number 66. Holding, number 66, offense. Boy, you called that one. Yeah, act like that happened to you once in a while while you were coaching. I knew those officials pretty well. I knew which one called which penalties, and what I saw a holding penalty coming from the sideline. He only keys one person. That's a right tackle. A lot of scrutiny on the right tackle. First down and 20. Again, that was Bartkowski throwing on first down again. Junior Miller in motion. And a throw on first and 20. Gets it off to Andrews. He has a convoy. 35. Boy, he bounces off to somebody to the 44-yard line. Picked up some of that yardage. Julius Adams over there, number 85. But Andrews like a fire plug when he bounced off the tackler. He is, you know, both of these running backs do that. They get out in the open field and they have it, that leverage. So shoulders get down and we see it's linebacker John Zamberlin here. You know, when you tackle these two running backs, you have to get your arms wrapped around them to get them down. To yes, it is. They have seven seconds, as you can see, or well, they'd had a delay of game coming up. So Scott having trouble with the shoe. Bartkowski using what could be a very important timeout with 11.01 to go in this third quarter. The Falcons lead it 28-21. Gary Bender with John Madden. We just had a timeout called by Atlanta. They couldn't get to the line of scrimmage as Scott had thrown a shoe. So they have two timeouts remaining. They have a second down and 10 after getting 10 yards back after a holding penalty. Artkowski has Junior Miller. The near side is the tight end, his two receivers. Jenkins and Francis to the top of the screen. Andrews in motion. Artkowski second and 10 delivers a ball to Andrews and Andrews is out to the midfield strike. He's four yards short of the first down. Rod Schott who's a very fast linebacker had a tough time staying with Andrews. He did he had to follow him all the way across the field. Andrews started out in the backfield. He went in motion like he was going to be the lead blocker continued on and went out into the flat to for the reception. That's one thing about these two running backs, Atlanta Lynn Kane and William Andrews. 
they're really complete players as we see they'll block when they're not carrying the ball they run very hard tough to tackle and they also catch the ball third down a yard to go Land has made thus far five of seven third downs this time it's Miller and Miller is very close to the first down wait a minute they say he did not have control of the football he was juggling the ball as he was going out of bounds Rod showed again defending on the play so that brings up a fourth down I think that was right again and we'll see it again but he has to have control not only both feet in bounds but he has to have control of the ball in his hand and we'll see him here his feet are in he's okay here as he gets the ball here but you see he doesn't have control he doesn't have control and when he stepped out he was just getting control very close <laughs> it was James to kick he has an average of 49 five on two kicks in the first half and he's going to try to hit the corner Preston Brown's over there though and also over there very quickly is Ray Strong as he's run out of bounds at the 17 yard line and so New England will not have the good field position that was a 36 yard kick that time by John James 10 04 to go in this third quarter. They're giving Steve Grogan a standing ovation and the history behind that John as they did it last week. They're trying to generate some enthusiasm. They are you know and that's the story of the Patriots this year and their enthusiasm. They've given Grogan a tough time here in this stadium from time to time last year they gave last week they gave him a standing ovation. And they did again today on a first down for the 17 Grogan hits Hasselbeck and Hasselbeck has it at the 25 yard line. Well, some people have said that New England is the type of team that's seemingly always upset by adversity. Everything from Chuck Fairbanks leaving to contract problems to the fact that they didn't play with emotion. So maybe the fans feel they can help turn some of that around. You know, a quarterback can say anything that the booze don't bother him, but everyone needs to be loved and accepted, and quarterbacks are no different. Gain of nine, second down, a yard to go. Grogan around the end comes Stanley Morgan and Morgan really tough at the 29 yard line belted by Frank Reed but that will be enough for a first down but did he pay for this one he really pays it yeah they aren't used to running they don't feel like that but he does a good job of getting rid of it a tackler there he just starts to get up field and gets it right at the end that's a that's a summer uh, a, a somersault or a cartwheel which is it? I don't know, but you got to reorient yourself after that one, don't you? That's a first down. That's right. At the 29. 28 21, Atlanta with the lead. New England with the football for the second time in the second half. This is Calhoun and almost picked off by Reed. He had nobody between him and the goal line if he'd have gotten that one. He would have taken it in. That was a zone, I think, that. Uh, I think that Grogan read that as a man to man and then Reed was just sitting out there in the zone. He comes across makes it down. Now watch your reaction here after he misses it. <laughs> he gets up in the air pretty good doesn't Looks it like he's stomping on some snakes there or something uh, from the 29 second down 10 but again pretty good pass defense. On the second and 10 Grogan too short of the mark. Jackson the intended receiver. I'll tell you that's an interesting thing there. You know uh, you know as a coach you're always looking to say well what happened. Grogan wasn't able to to step up and that's what happened. So instead of Grogan and saying why did he throw it low. That was a point the offensive line allowed too much penetration inside the center and the guards have to seal off inside penetration so the quarterback can step up and throw it and on that pass because it was short really should be given to the interior of the Patriot offensive line. Third down and 10 Foreman and Jackson the running backs behind Grogan. Grogan back protection now taking off. 30 and he's not going to get that first down and hit pretty hard. Atlanta reacted very well this time when Grogan took off. I'm sure they talked about that in the first half as Williams and Curry got there. They probably did and that's one of the things that you really uh, don't enjoy talking about because they'll stop start back and pass defense and that's what they should do. 
but they have to keep a quarter an eye on the quarterback in case he runs. Hubach coming in to kick. He has an average of 46 yards on three previous kicks. One of them was 65 yards in the first half, and he had another beauty. This is Smith. At the 20, trying to get to the wall, to the 30, 35, and the little guy brings it out to the 38-yard line. Doing a very commendable job after fumbling that opening kickoff. He's done well. Bill Curry over to make the stop. 18-yard return, and that was a kick of some 48 yards in length. From Ottawa, Kansas, and Kansas State, Steve Grogan. He's played very well, but in this third quarter on two series, they've not been able to move the football. His team trailing 28-21. Line of scrimmage, the 37 for Atlanta. A little draw to Andrews. Andrews breaks the tackle to the 42-yard line. Ray Hamilton made the stop. Andrews, he just looks like a little fire plug out there. That was a good play call. We see it's a draw. The Patriots are basically a three-man line team. On this play, as we see here, they were in a four-man line, so they were thinking pass. They want to get some pass rush now on first down, so they went to the four-man line on first down, and Atlanta came back with a good call against it with a draw play to Andrews. Gain of five, second and five. 7-13 to go, third quarter. This is Lynn Kane, and Kane has a first down and then some. Check that. Correction, that's Andrews. And Andrews gets a first down and again showing excellent balance. Getting up very slowly on that play is Roland James, the number one draft pick from Tennessee. Roland James was getting up slow on that play because he missed the tackle. He was really faked out. We see Andrews come out here. He's not only powerful, but watch his moves right here. Boom to the outside, boom back to the inside. Watch James goes down and they and they run into each other. And Andrews runs right by both of them. He took uh, his teammate Fox out of the play. But that was Andrews carrying the ball to the 45. First down, Atlanta now starting to establish a running game. First half, they had 60 yards. New England had 51. Bartkowski on first down, throwing again, going up top. Out for Jackson, but overthrow. Jackson, the intended receiver, and Rick Sanford, who was the number one draft pick a year ago out of South Carolina, had that one defended pretty well. He did have it defended. He had him all the way, and I think Steve Bartkowski decided he was going to try the up to Jackson, to Alfred Jackson, and if it wasn't there, he was just going to throw it over everyone's head and into the end zone. That's not bad. You really, if it is covered and you're trying to go deep, you can't force it. Just let her go, come back, and try it next time. Philadelphia trying to win their second in a row after beating Denver last week. Second down 10, but on first down again, as John Madden said, you got to throw a lot on first down, and Atlanta's done just that the entire game. Andrews again. Andrews, nice cut, 40, 35, 30. Andrews to the 20, 15, to the 13-yard line. Ray Claver made the stop, and that time Andrews showed that he can run pretty well. He has good speed. He sure can. He not only has the power, but he has the elusiveness, and then after this move here, the cut back inside, we'll see the speed. We'll see him take off for the long gainer. William Andrews last year had a great year in the opener. He didn't run for an awful lot, but he's making up for it today. 32-yard run. Claiborne, by the way, has been timed in college in the 9-4-600. So he had a pretty fair guy catching from behind. When you get under 9-5, you don't even worry. Doesn't matter. No, that's as fast as you can be. 32-yard run. Sets the ball up at the 13-yard line of New England. Bartkowski. And that's broken up again. That's Lunsford. It's the third time, unofficially, that New England has reached up and batted down a pass. You know, that's not a bad pass defense either. You know, that's one thing that the Patriots have been doing well. When they, when they are pass rushing, if they don't get close to Bartkowski again, they all get their hands up. And that was Mel Lunsford. And that's the second one of those that he had today. He was the most valuable player, lineman-wise, last year for New England, as voted by the coaches. I drafted Mel Lunsford eight years ago. Third round, 1972. Played at Central State in Oklahoma. On that last play, Junior Miller was the intended receiver. And Lunsford had other ideas. Second down, 10. Bartkowski again. Wide open, Miller. Junior Miller is open. Barkowski upset with himself. 
That's the same play, John, they threw earlier for a touchdown. That's the same play, and I know that that's Steve Bartkowski. You know, he has to shake it off, which he's saying to himself now, geez, just forget it. Wide open, there was no one around him. Again, it was a crossing pattern by the tight end. He'll delay a little, let the others get deep, and now he just works out to the side. See, the safety thought that he was blocking. He went back off him, and no one picked Junior Miller up after the delay. But again, Miller showing the ability to really get open. He's a big target, six foot four. Third down, 10. And New England wants a timeout. They're going to use their first timeout. And that might be at a pretty good time because New England right now, I think, a little shaken by that last development. I think so. And the fact that they're, they're one touchdown down, this can be a very big drive for Atlanta offense and New England defense because one touchdown, they don't have to hurry. They don't have to rush. They know all they have to do is score one. Now, when if you're looking at two, it's a different story. You'd like to get one quick and then work on the other one. Barkowski now has missed his last four passes after in the first half hitting 11 of 14. But the one he'd like to have back was that one with Miller wide open. Saw some other scores. The Lions trying to make it two in a row. There's Lehman Bennett. Imagine Barkowski kind of glad to have a little time to talk it over. It was not his timeout. It was New England's. I think in this situation both teams are happy to have this time out. You know they've been on the field they're they're getting a little tired they get to rest up for a, a real spurt here and again this is a, a big play we have third and ten. I'm sure that New England will come in with their pass defense they'll have the five defensive backs uh, Atlanta will probably have the three wide receivers because uh, Atlanta here should go into the end zone or at least for the first down. If they're not going to do that, then they'll get the field goal anyway. Some changes coming out as Lunsford. They sent in on this particular play. Bill Matthews who's a backup middle linebacker out of South Dakota State. Third down and 10. Tim Mazzetti standing by if they don't get it here. 28-21, Atlanta with the lead. Markowski. Protection there. Junior Miller's there. He makes the catch. It's going to be short of the first down at the nine yard line. Mike Hawkins defending on the play. And fourth down coming up. Mazzetti coming in. We'll see. You know, we've been talking a lot about Junior Miller, but he's made some super plays. Watch that catch. He he reached out, caught the ball at its furthest point, and just great hands. I'm sure that he has very strong hands. I really didn't like that play. I think if you have third and ten. You should get all your receivers up 10 yards. So if you do complete the pass, it gives you a first down or a touchdown. There's no good in completing a pass and still have to kick the field goal. This will be a 26 yard attempt by Mazzetti. Mazzetti is one of one this year. He had a 23 yarder last week. Mazzetti's kick is on the way and Tim Mazzetti hits it. And so it's now a 31 to 21 football game, a 10 point lead for the Atlanta Falcons as Tim Mazzetti in 1980 is two for two. A 10 point lead for the Atlanta Falcons, the man who just added three, Mazzetti to kick off. Preston Brown is back deep now for the New England Patriots. 5 10 remaining in the third quarter. Mazzetti who's kicked off extremely well does it again Brown will not yes he will no he won't <laughs> well I don't know he was sure what he was going to do there I think what you said were the same thoughts that were going through his mind yes I will no I won't yes I will maybe I should nope I'll just stay here and take it on to 20 well after mishandling that one I think he's a little shaky back there I think he is but here again if he doesn't go out then he can go down and get the ball in 20 see here he's starting out he said nope I'm going to go down I'll just wait and take that but he he wasn't sure until he got to that point. I said he's really done the job kicking off. I think he's out of the hurricane. Good point out of the eye of the hurricane which really was last year a long season for him at the 20 yard line Calhoun Ivory the running backs. This is Calhoun 25 30 35 and a first down all the way out to the 39 yard line. Harold Jackson who was split to the near side threw a block on that play. I'll tell you the other person that threw the block on that play was John Hanna the left guard. We'll see him see big number 73 pulling out here. Watch this Reed comes up the strong safety he takes him out right there to let Calhoun get by. John There's Hanna. Jackson throwing a block too. gave Calhoun just the step he needed. 17 yard pickup. 
Boy, you talked about Hannah, and he's living up to everything you said about him. Run and pass, and he does it all. Hannah, 6'2", 265 pounds. Grogan with a first down. Now who? Flying up there, ready to really unload on him was Jim Laughlin, as now you see the Patriots, defensively, they have been tested today. They sure have, and they've been having some problems with formations, and basically it's that three-wide receiver where the the Atlanta offense is spreading them across the field, and they're creating some matchups with linebackers that the Patriots are trying to solve. Rich Schumer, the defensive coach there, former head coach at the University of Wyoming. Second down, 10. Line of scrimmage, 32-yard line. Should say 37-yard line. Brogan in this second half is one for six for nine yards. This time he hits Morgan. Well, that's Carlos Pennywell who's checked in for the first time. And Pennywell, who had one catch last week for 16 yards, grabbed that one. But again, John, Atlanta deployed themselves very, very well. They lost a half yard. Very well. They weren't fooled on that play at all. It was a, a play pass fake where they faked a run to the right and came back to with a screen to Carlos Pennywell to the left. Dwight Wheeler, the left tackle, got out there and missed a block in front of Pennywell. Pennywell, third-year man from Grambling. He is a cousin of Robert Pennywell, a linebacker for Atlanta. Third down, 11 yards to go. Johnson, along with Foreman, in the backfield behind Steve Grogan. 31-21, Atlanta with the lead. Grogan. He'll run it again. Now he throws it the last second. The receiver was Hasselbeck, the tight end. That was a surprise. All of a sudden, he just rifled a shot. He did. Grogan is full of surprises. That, that one didn't work. But you know, the one thing he can spread the defense. The Atlanta offense is spreading it with personnel. Grogan spreads it by starting and going in a drop back and then sprinting right or left and making them cover the whole field. Ubach who's kicked very well, a 46-yard average to kick this one. This will be his fifth kick of the day. Smith back deep for Atlanta. Just inside, four minutes left in the third quarter. Short kick. Smith's going to try it. The super net kind of squirming around out there. He gets it out to the 36-yard line. A flag has been thrown. After the play had come to a close, 33-yard kick that time by Hubach. He's had two that haven't been as long as he's wanted, but by and large, he's kicked him very well. He had a 27-yarder and a 65-yarder in his first and second kicks of this game. Super Nat's trying to figure out what that penalty is. It, as you say, it was a penalty that was after the play. Personal foul against New England. Yeah. That'll tack 15 yards on, and Atlanta's going to have good field position. And you said this earlier. When Atlanta has a good field position, they historically have been a different football team. A different personality. You know, when, they, when they're backed up, they really they don't have that same freedom. There's but an old coach they, of yours right there. John Polanchik right there. He's a quarterback coach, and he's talking to Steve Grogan. It's interesting. Personal foul, number 52, first down. You know, that one was, again, it was after the play. As we watched Supernat here, he let it bounce and said, well, I think I'll take a shot, a little spin here, and then I'll get up and try and get what I can. You know, and he goes down, he spins, and he, he's tough to tackle. He picked up an extra five yards. At the 50-yard line now, Atlanta with a football. First down, 3.48 to go in this third quarter. Markowski giving it off to Andrews, and Andrews two yards to the 48. You know, the, the quarterback coach for the Atlanta Falcons is, is Dick Wood. And in my first staff as a head coach, I had both Dick Wood and John Polanchik, both of the quarterbacks coaches in this game. Polanchik, you're telling us the smallest man on your staff, but if you ever had an altercation on the practice field, he broke up all the fights. He'd break them. He'd just dive in there. And he was, a, I had these big coaches, you know, and they'd back off away, and old Polanyi would just jump right in the pile. Andrews now has 79 yards on 12 carries. Second down and seven. Markowski, the blitz. Boy, is he hit. Really dumped by Rod Schoke. Schoke did that last week in that football game against Cleveland. It was a big one. You know, they haven't been bringing that weak side linebacker a lot in this game, and I think Atlanta started getting those backs at, and they forgot that Schott might come. See, and he comes from the outside, and they didn't. 
That should have been either the guard or the tackle on that side, Scott or Ken. They both doubled the end and let Schote come. They didn't check him. Boy, he teed off on Brian Seipel a week ago. That's the first sack of the game and only the second this year that Atlanta's given up, showing you the improvement in that offensive line. Third down now, 14 yards to go. Now we have a flag. They didn't get the playoff. Delay a game. They didn't get it off in 30 seconds. So that'll add five yards to their problem. It was really, again, they were in the three wide receiver set. They had the New England defense spread all across the field, but they took too much time. Delay offense. So instead of having this drive started, or I should say this series started at the 50 yard line, now they're all the way back to their own 40 yard line. A third down coming up, a sack again, showing how important it is because Atlanta was moving with a 10 point lead again. And all of a sudden, Schoet turned it around. Third and 19. That's when I always wanted to get a drink of water. And Bartkowski isn't going to let his coach. He called timeout and he says, I want to go over and talk to you and see what you want to do on this play. Well, they have only one timeout remaining. And we still have two and a half minutes left in this third quarter. So Atlanta using their timeouts early in this football game. You know, in the fourth quarter or at the end of the fourth quarter, that could very well come back to haunt them. You like to save your three timeouts in one bunch in case you need them at the end of the game to get a score to tie or win. And now they've used two, so uh, of course with a, a 10 point lead, maybe it's not as important right now, but it very well could be in the last two minutes of this game. There's Bartkowski, Lehman Bennett on the left, fourth year as coach. He came in here, they went seven and seven, then they made the playoffs for the first time in the franchise history, going nine and seven, then last year went six and ten. Who's he yelling for? <laughs> An idea. <laughs> third, third and 19, none of them work. You know, that's, that's the one. What do you do? Third and 19. Now those second and two, of course, they're a lot of fun. Everyone wants to call that play. Third and 19, uh, you tend to look around and yell a lot. Boy, look at this, Philadelphia 28-7. They have been impressive in the first two weeks. They sure have. From the 40 yard line. Third down as we mentioned 19 yards to go. Barkowski has the time. And he has his man and that will be enough for the first down. Alfred Jenkins is the man that caught the ball. On a third and 19, a 21 yard strike, and the Atlanta Falcons keep the drive going. We have seen some very interesting and great throwing today by two fine quarterbacks as we see Barkowski. Look at all those people around him. He takes it and zips it out there for the first down. Now, that, when you're third and 19 and you have the confidence to go back there, stand in there, and wait and complete it for a first down, that's something special, as is throwing out of your end zone, which Grogan did earlier. Well, that offensive line has been something special. Jenkins had 50 catches last year. Coming up with that 21 yard grab, Markowski off to Andrews. Andrews this time is gang tackled. Oh, taking shots at him. The ball is loose. Blown dead. I believe the ball was blown dead at the 40 yard line. Andrews made the mistake of standing up and not going down, and he had bodies flying everywhere after him. Right, and it was after his progress was stopped. When his progress was stopped, the uh, whistle blew, and the ball didn't come out until after that. You see, they do a good job. We, we see Nelson coming up here. He forces them. He makes the tackle. The two of them have him. Now, probably Andrews should have gone down right there. See, but as he went to turn, it looked like the ball came out. But the whistle did blow before he made that last twist. That was Tim Fox who stripped him of the football. But at the 40 is where it's been set. They lost two yards. It'll be second down 12 from the 40. 31-21, Atlanta with the lead. Bartkowski, nice play action. Miller again, and the big tight ends inside the 20. And he got down there in a hurry, didn't he? Tim was, Fox made the tackle. It was a great catch. It was the same play that they had run early. Watch, they start this play fake. See, to hold those linebackers in and just run Miller straight up the field. There's no passing. And he throws it over the linebacker's head and in front of the secondary. 23-yard pickup to the 17-and-a-half-yard line. 
There it is again. What hands this big guy has. He's not only big and can run, but we've seen him latch on to some passes away from his body. Right, and we see Tim Fox, number 48, make the tackle. That's the way to tackle him. You go and cut him below the knees. James Mayberry has come in in the backfield. He was in on that previous play. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. First down call by Kowski. Over the top to Jackson. And he's out of bounds. He got a little shove on that play from Sanford. And with three seconds left, now we have an altercation between Sanford and Jackson. Again, I know what Jackson was upset about. He was upset that, that after he was out of bounds, he was, he was pushed and maybe pushed into that wall down there. But the one thing, you can't take the officiating into your own hands. I learned that. As we watch this, you see, the ball is a nice thrown pass. It's right over his head, into his hands. But as he's going out, you see, he's pushed. And in fact, he does end up in the wall, and he had a little time to think about it. And he said, heck, that guy pushed me. Quite obviously. And so Sportsmanlike, 85 on offense, 29 on defense. I think under the circumstances, that's the way it should have been because it started with Sanford and Jackson retaliated. It probably should have been, but but they didn't call it on Sanford when he did it. It was an afterthought, and really, it was a, a reaction that Jackson made that he shouldn't have made, and I don't know that Sanford, because of that, should be penalized. Well, anyway, they're offsetting penalty, second and 10. By the way, Miller now, John, has eight catches for 116 yards. Big day. Line of scrimmage, the 17. Second down and 10. Last play of the third quarter. Falcons with a 10-point lead and trying to add to it. Arkowski gets it off to Lynn Keane. Keane with a nice move. And he makes it to about the 11-yard line. And so that's the end of the third quarter. For the score here at Schaefer Stadium, the Atlanta Falcons 31, the New England Patriots 21. We now pause for a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter. Atlanta with a 10-point lead, and John, this is a very important drive for the Falcons. If they get anything on this drive, it's really going to put New England in a hole. Well, especially if they get a, a touchdown. They have, they have four yards to go here, but a touchdown would probably make those timeouts academic at this point. Third down and five. Atlanta's made six of ten third down conversion. Markowski eludes the on-rushing lineman and delivers the football to Kane. And Kane at the 10 yard line, they're still going to be two yards short of a first down. So, fourth down coming up. Tim Mazzetti, earlier in this game, in this third quarter, hit a 26 yard field goal, and he'll be coming in again. That's the second time that they did that on, on third down, down in the Patriots area. A, a third down again threw it short of the first down, and they still have to kick a field goal. I think at that time he was probably thinking deeper, but he got a little pressure and had to dump it off. Did a good job avoiding that on rushing lineman. This is going to be a 28 yard field goal attempt. John James to hold. Mazzetti for the year is two of two. Mazzetti's kick is on the way and he has it. And Tim Mazzetti is three of three in this season. Two here today. It's now 34 21 in favor of the Atlanta Falcons played very, very well. Steve Bartkowski has now given his team a 13-point lead. In that third quarter, Atlanta led in time of possession by about four and a half minutes to show you the good ball control they had. Preston Brown on the kickoff dropped at the 20-yard line. Preston Brown hit by James Mayberry, number 39, from Colorado, back of fullback. And now Steve Grogan is going to have to play some catch-up football. Good point on that field goal, John. As you mentioned, two scores, two touchdowns, the two PATs that still do it. That was the biggest difference between a touchdown and a field goal there. Had they scored a touchdown, then, then New England would need three scores. The fact that they got a field goal, New England could still win this game with two scores. So the door is still open for them. Calhoun and Ivory, the running backs behind Steve Grogan. Grogan, out of pressure, gets it off to Calhoun on a screen. He bubbled the ball, and Kenny Johnson has it for Atlanta. That ball stripped from Calhoun from behind after the screen play, 
And now Atlanta has a football back. Let's watch this one. And the reason it was stripped is because the Atlanta Falcon defense has been hustling all day. They've been swarming everything. We saw Joe Williams, number 58. He starts out on a blitz. He stops and comes back and strips Calhoun from behind. That's a great effort. Boy, it was. That guy can get around, can he? Williams can run. That was some adjustment. He's supposed to blitz. He's supposed to rush the quarterback. He sees the throw. He stops. He turns. He goes back and gets a tackle from behind. That's Johnson who recovered the fumble. Johnson playing very well today. First down now. At the 27 of New England. Artkowski gets off to Kane and Kane to the 20 yard line. Still, just a remarkable effort the way he can pick his way. Mike Hawkins over to make the tackle. Third year man from Texas A&I. And Steve Bartkowski stats, look at that. Three touchdowns. Every time they've had the football, they have moved it extremely well. You know, that's the most important statistic is touchdowns. How many times you ring the bell? Those, you know, percentages and stuff, those are nice, but it depends on what you throw and what you get with what you throw. Jenkins and Francis to the bottom of the screen. Second down, three yards to go. A pickup of seven by Kane on that last play. Andrews, the only running back. I checked that. That's Kane. And Julius Adams has him, or does he? Almost got away from Julius Adams, showing the good balance again. Kane looked like he'd be thrown further up the field, but all of a sudden stayed on his feet. Have you ever seen a running back that was so difficult to tackle that was only 205 pounds? I've never seen one. That last defense of the Patriots was interesting. We talked about the grits blitz in Atlanta. New England had all 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. They know that they cannot allow any kind of score here, field goal or touchdown, and they are really pressing Atlanta to try and cause a fumble. McGee comes in, Adams checks out. A defensive forward wall, third down. They lost yardage, third and six. Artkowski on the play action. Pressure put on. He had to get rid of it too quickly. Miller, the intended receiver. That was Steve Nelson who came right up the middle from his linebacking spot and messed up the timing. So Mazzetti now has a chance to add another field goal, and this one could really be a big one if he gets this one. This one is a big one because now that puts New England out of needing two scores to needing three scores. 12-13 remaining. Lehman Bennett, he knows that. This is going to be a 40-yard attempt. The longest attempt of the day. Mozzetti with a 26-yarder and a 28-yarder. Last week with a 23-yarder. In the preseason, he hit a 47-yarder, so it's within his range. He'll come tough on a block here. Mazzetti has enough distance, and he hit another one. A 40-yard field goal for Mazzetti. And he's a big story here today for these Atlanta Falcons, who now lead it 37 to 21 with 12:09, and Atlanta trying to pull at even 500 after two games. Atlanta now with a 37 to 21 lead. Mazzetti kicking off. Mazzetti with three field goals in this game. Preston Brown from the goal line. He'll bring this one out. He has a wedge ahead of him, and he's not going to go very far. 17-yard line. Last week, the NFC won both of the interconference battles, Tampa Bay defeating Cincinnati, Philadelphia defeating Denver, and now here today, an NFC team, Atlanta, leading New England. It's always been a lot made in the past of the AFC being the better conference, but in the preseason, the NFC also won that standoff, 22-20 to 1. A little more equity, you think? Well, it looks like it. I'm, uh, uh, you know, Atlanta from last week to this week has made amazing improvement. I bet they had a great week of practice. First down now from the 20. Back to throw is Grogan. And was that caught by Calhoun or did it hit the ground? They're going to give him the reception. It was. They need a lot more than that to go as we as we see. Kenny Johnson here. I think that this is a big story. You know, last week they lost. Uh, Ahmad Rashad caught 11 passes against Kenny Johnson. They threw for 395 yards. This week, this man has made an amazing comeback for a rookie. And his confidence had to really be shaken. Here's Grogan dropped for a loss. Hammered pretty good that time, and that's 56. Richardson. That's the second sack of the day for this Atlanta team. Richardson and Williams. We watched Williams earlier, and Richardson. 
two big improvements in this Atlanta defense along with Buddy Curry. There's three young linebackers, two rookies, and one second-year man contributing to the Falcon defense. And they're doing a good job of pass rushing. You know, they don't do it with size. Williams is only 215 pounds. Al Richardson is only 206 pounds. But they both run very fast. They can take on a block, come off it, and run fast to the quarterback. Third down, 10 yards to go. Grogan back. The Sutton starting to break through. Off to Foreman. That didn't look very good. Foreman open, but that'll bring up a fourth down. Looks like the Patriots are starting to press a little. Boy, Philadelphia is doing a number on Minnesota. 42 to 7. That's hard to believe after all the offense the Vikings had last week. New Orleans trailing Chicago. Chicago losing on that unbelievable block field goal last week in Green Bay. Kubach up. Beautiful kick. Oh, what a kick. Smith back inside the 25 yard line. He has it up to the 41, so he got a lot of that back. Coming over was Larry McGrew, the rookie linebacker from Southern Cal. But that kick by Hubosh, 58 yards. He earlier in this game had a 65 yard kick. From the 41, Atlanta with a 37 21 lead. 10 and a half minutes. That 17 yard return by the Supernat. Kind of offset that long 58 yard kick by Hubach. Francis and Jenkins are wide receivers. Andrews and Kane, the running backs. All 11 up. Well, they did that earlier. Well, you're gambling there, aren't you? The flag on the play. Running with the ball is Kane. Kane just won't go down. He breaks the tackle to the 35, 30. He's going to take it all the way to the 10, 5 to the 1. Now, Schultz caught him, but again, there's a flag on the play. But regardless of whether that goes or not, it just shows you again of the resourcefulness, the strength of this Lynn Kane. That was 58 yards. They are going to bring it back. But what a run. Two flags on the play, in fact. Yeah, there's two flags, and they'll be offsetting, so it'll still be first and 10 in the same spot, and they'll play it over. Which is a shame because Lynn Kane not only made a great run with great effort, but then to have to come all the way back and do it again is very difficult. But you still can't take that run away from him. It won't show in the statistics, but everyone that's watching this game saw. Holding number 87, offense. Offside, number 70, defense. Replay. Well, McDougal was for New England and McKeska. Tight end in there was the other guilty party for Atlanta. That would have put Kane over the 100 yard mark because he had 51 yards on 13 carries for the second week in a row. Yep. Dallas at Denver or Washington at New York. That will be the second half of our CBS doubleheader. So be sure to check the listings in your area. Boy, those will be two fine games. Denver after losing the first the Giants. What a surprise they were last week in St. Louis. McKeska and Miller two tight ends in. First down 10, Kane going to run again. This time he's going the other direction, or is it? Swarm under. And I would have thought that Kane would have been awfully tired after that long run. You would think so, and maybe they could have let William Andrews carry it once there, but again, he held up his record of not letting one man tackle him. And I haven't, I've seen two games now, and I haven't seen one man tackle him yet. Lehman Bennett's team. As we go inside the 10 minute mark, with the lead here that I'm sure many people as they see the score throughout the NFL are very surprised. Now it's second down 17. Kane again. Kane out to the 35. It's a little bit back. Ray Hamilton over there to make the stop. Time starting to be very important for this New England team. Nine and a half minutes left. You know, Gary, when you have a quarterback like Steve Bartkowski and you have running backs like Lynn Kane, William Andrews, wide receivers like Wallace Francis, Alfred Jenkins, and then a tight end like Junior Miller, I don't think Atlanta all year will ever really be out of a game before they go into it. And add to that, John, how well their offensive line has protected Bartkowski. That's, that's the story I'm really surprised about. I can't imagine this team giving up 54 sacks last year. Right, and then add to that the improvement of their defense with the three new young linebackers. Third down now, 15 yards to go. 
now discussion going on out there. Eight fifty-eight showing on the scoreboard clock after the rain we had in the first half. It's cleared here and very pleasant New England day. The leaves are starting already to change up in this area. It's been very dry up here as an end result. The leaves changing earlier than usual. You see that field judge here, Swearingen. Do you remember him? Any games? That was that a game that. What was that in? <clears throat> the one that Franco Harris caught. What did they call that? The immaculate reception. I don't know that they've called it anything yet. He was involved in that play, right? He was involved. He was a referee in that game. I want you to say something now about that Baltimore-Pittsburgh game, 14-13. I will say you were right. You said before the game that you expect Baltimore to play Pittsburgh very tough and tight, and I said, nah, there's no way. I just want you to remember that because yeah. I'm not right very often. I remember. <laughs> oh, we've got a problem with the 30-second clock. That's what it's all about. Eight seconds showing on it. Trying to reset it. I guess well, we're ready to go now, huh? It's early in the season, and sometimes the stadium clocks aren't in shape yet for the regular season. Well, they were going to start again, and now they stop it again. It still only says eight on it, and they aren't going to start until that thing says 30 or whatever it's supposed to say. <laughs> Ray Strong has come into the backfield now for the Atlanta Falcons. Tonight on CBS, outstanding lineup coming your way following the doubleheader. 60 minutes. Archie, one day at a time. Alice Jefferson's and Trapper John MD, all on CBS tonight. Yeah, they got the clock back in shape now. Well, you know, it's not the 30 second clock, John. It's the game clock. They've now moved it from 8.58 to 9.06. They wanted to give them eight more seconds, right? And there was eight seconds on the on the clock. Well, anyway, it's third down, 15 to go for Atlanta. Murkowski again with all kinds of time, delivers the ball. It's caught by Jenkins. Alfred Jenkins, and that will be a first down. How many times have we seen Bartkowski on long third downs come through? That's an 18-yard pass completion. I like that a lot better than what he did on the third and shorter because now he knew that he had third down, and if he's going to throw the ball, you have to get the ball up to your receiver beyond the first down mark, which he did. Jenkins having a big day. He's got some passes up in the air. He really does a good job. He only is, they say he's 172, but really weighs about 155. And there's Stanley Morgan. Looks like that's around the shin area more than anything, doesn't it? Or the calf. Yeah. It's probably a kick or a bruise. First down, Jenkins, a catch, giving him the first down as Andrews to the 40-yard line. And now Atlanta just eating up the clock with eight minutes now left in this game. And we were talking at halftime where really in the first half there was no need for either team to run because they were doing so successfully uh, throwing the ball. And now I think now we see that running is important to be able to control the clock to take time off the board. You really do it with the running game. You see the stats on Bartkowski. We've been told by Bill Barnes our producer that Stanley Morgan has a sprained left calf muscle. Lynn Kane and whoa what a tackle that time by Schott. Schott has really played well in this game. Schott he has he made a big sack of course. It didn't turn into a, a change for the team, but but he has been. He's been in on a lot of tackles, and and he's probably the first man as we look at Rod Schott, number 56 there, the tackle Lynn Kane all by himself. It finally happened. It we did a, happen. We have a final, John. Buffalo won their second straight, defeating the Jets, who lost their second straight, 20 to 10. The Jets now, their next game will be against Philadelphia, who will go in there unbeaten on a Monday night. I'll tell you that Buffalo team, they've been a surprise. Two and oh. Third down now. Five. Arkowski off to Kane. Kane did a lot of running in this game. And oh, he's hit late on that one, maybe, huh? Maybe not. At the 35 yard line. Real shot on the near side. You know, he has a first down there, and yep. I guarantee you tomorrow he'll be tired. He'll probably spend a little time in that whirlpool. And so the ball now spotted at the 34 yard line. There's that final we were talking about. Buffalo. I think I said the Jets. Is it the Giants on that Monday night playing Philadelphia? Yes, it's the Giants in Philadelphia. So from the 34, first down. 
640 left in this game. Jenkins, and this time to the near side, Alfred Jackson. Up the middle. That's Andrews, and Andrews across the 20 for the first down. And they're just now just pounding this football right at New England. I would say this as we see this, that they have worn the New England defense down. They are handling them in the line of scrimmage. Those running backs have done an excellent job all day of hitting the holes and then getting into the secondary and making extra yards, making something happen, both of them. John Andrews now has 99 yards. He's one yard short of a 100-yard day. Andrews last year had three 100-yard days in that rookie year. He also has four catches today for 30 yards. What a day for Andrews. First down at the 19, Kane, and he swore. New England really playing the wide stuff left very well. McDougal, the rookie out of Virginia Tech, was over there first. Showed well, also did. supporting. That was an all-out blitz on that one. They brought nine players. They know that they have to press, that, that if they're going to do anything, they have to force a fumble and we'll see it here we'll see all nine up in line of scrimmage look at that penetration see they just have one that they couldn't get blocked at the 25 a loss second down 16 a loss of six yards McDougal they really like he's a fifth round draft pick the big defensive lineman they've been looking for in the draft 6'5 270 270 is big <laughs> unless you're a coach Francis put to the bottom of the screen Barkowski Jennifer Miller Miller can't handle this one, but that's one of the few he hasn't. I wonder if that was another tip. It looked like uh, Lunsford may have gotten a hand on that one. And again, you know, the other thing that he's doing with Miller here is we watch to see the safeties coming on a blitz here. We see someone gets it. No, no, they didn't touch it. But again, that's one that Miller didn't handle, but he's handled everything else today. Markowski, 19 of 29 for 244 yards. And as John mentioned, the big stat, three touchdowns. Third down and 16. Jenkins to the bottom of the screen along with Francis. Markowski with the time. Tended receiver on that play was Francis. There's a flag at the 30-yard line. Pretty well covered that time by New England. James, number 38, he's their number one draft pick. It was covered, and again, uh, there were three men on Francis, and Bartkowski realized that, and he just threw it into the end zone or out of the end zone. Now, again, that was, that was called by the official on the side, so it would probably be Mike Ken, uh, number 78. Well, that's one of the few times they've been holding, and again, that Atlanta offensive line has really protected Steve Bartkowski. Against a good pass rushing defense last year, New England led the Holy NFL. 57 offense, third down. Ooh, that guy looked from the side all the way into the center. <laughs> but last year, the Patriots led the league in sacks. 57 of them. They had two sacks last week. As you mentioned, looked all the way inside to Van Note, who was guilty of holding. Back to the 35, third down now, 26 yards. But as far as Atlanta's concerned, the clock now showing 5.03 left to go. They're taking a lot of time on this drive. Markowski with the time to throw again. Broken up at the line of scrimmage again. Another one of those arms up in the air. While he's been protected, that's been the only breakdown. Those long arms of that New England Patriot front four has really caused some problems. I know that's about the fourth or fifth tip that they've had on that, but at this point, I'm sure that Bartkowski isn't too concerned with it. I'm surprised that to take some more time off the clock that he didn't run the ball then and keep the clock running. Preston Brown will go back for this kick, this punt from John James. Sometimes time is more important than another score, and I think with a score of 37 to 21, that's the situation now. James with an average of 44.7. Three kicks. This guy is just an expert at angling the ball out. Let's see if he can do it here. He's going for it. Boy, look how high he got that one up. And he's going to like that one. Is he going to like that one? That's Beautiful. a spiral that I was trying to talk about earlier when I said it goes up and comes down, which most of the kicks do. But instead of turning over and going down the other way, it comes straight down the way it went up and causes tough bounces, as we just see. 
John James last year had 36 kicks inside the 20-yard line. He calls it the poocher punt, and boy, he just did a magnificent job there. The ball down at the two-yard line. Grogan getting off to Chuck Foreman, and Foreman got some breathing room out to the eight-yard line. In the second half of play, John, Grogan's only four of 10 for 15 yards. I know that a lot of that credit. The 15, correction, Chuck Foreman. Foreman again. Foreman to the 15, and that will be a first down. Well, they don't have a lot of time to run the ball, but Grogan needing a little breathing room now with 3.57 remaining in the game. Now he's going to put it up. Foreman. That's twice now. The ball's gone through the hands of Chuck Foreman. And Foreman's very upset with himself because that's one thing that he does as well as anyone as we see Grogan backing up here with really good pass protection. And now as we see here, he has room to step up. You see, he can follow through. Before he had a little problem on a couple of those passes, but that's as well as you can throw a pass. And Chuck Foreman realizes it right now. He dropped one last week in a game, but he, as you, I'm sure, will not be doing that the rest of the year. There's Russ Francis, who did not play today with the bruised ribs. He was hurt in the first half of last week's game with Cleveland. Grogan, second down 10. Hasselbeck, the tight end, is playing a place of Russ Francis, makes a first down catch out to the 33-yard line. And now New England without a huddle ready to go again. When we talk about big targets as a tight end, Don Hasselbeck is sure a big one, six foot seven. You know, that's easy for a quarterback to see, especially when you're Steve Grogan at 6'4. Francis is 6'6. Six, six. That was a 17 yard pickup. Grogan again, intercepted by Buddy Curry. Curry, the rookie linebacker, fumbled the ball. Robin Lawrence comes up with it, and Atlanta has the football. Buddy Curry, we've talked about all day long. As we'll see, he's done, you know, he not only calls the signals, plays the run pass, but I think that this will be a big boost to him is being able to play the pass defense. That's a great catch. That's a great catch for a wide receiver. There was a penalty on the play. It was against the Patriots, so it will be Atlanta's ball. Holding, number 77, declined, first down. That's Gary Petz, offensive tackle for New England, but of course they will refuse it. Andy Johnson was the guy that knocked the ball away from Curry, but Rollin Lawrence was able to come up with it. Here is Baltimore and Pittsburgh. That's a real shocker thus far, 17-13. You said it would happen. From the 37. First down, 3-14 left in this game. It's going to be a most interesting season, 1980. Rykowski to Andrews. Andrews to the 31-yard line. I'm sure that they talked to Steve Bartkowski on the sideline that last time, and they've decided now that they will just run the ball, keep it on the ground, and get time off the clock. They have two tight ends in there and a tight wing. They're really using a short yardage type of offense. That put Andrews over 100 yards for the day, that last carry, 103 yards on 16. So for Andrews in his career, he's had four of them. Last week, only 35 yards, but he's come back this week. Kane had the 100-yard day last week. Good balance. Second down, four. Andrews again. And the Auburn product inside the 25 for a first down. Zamberlin that, uh, making the stop. And Lehman Bennett said that getting William Andrews, as we see him here, look at the power that he comes through that line with. Holds onto the ball, both hands onto the ball, puts his shoulder, and really makes another yard or two after the initial contact. But I know that Lehman Bennett said last year it was like buying a Cadillac when you got William Andrews and, and finding out that you get 25 miles per gallon. Sometimes it looks like you he thinks he bought a Cadillac and he ended up with a Rolls Royce. <laughs> that was Lunsford that tried to take the ball away from Andrews. Well, so, in this situation, that's one thing that the running backs have to do as they go through. It's not really as important to gain a lot of yards as it is don't have a fumble because that's what the Patriots are trying to do is cause a fumble. So it'll be a first down for Atlanta with 219, a timeout called. Both these teams now have one timeout remaining. Barkowski coming into the huddle. Well, I tell you, Atlanta 
after losing that tough one last week showed some real character coming back this week. They sure did. I know I was talking to Wallace Francis at the hotel last night and he told me that they talked about that all week that you just can't talk. You have to play a complete and full game and they have today. First down from the 24 yard line and up the middle they go again with William Andrews and Andrews is to the 20. Gain of three. Be second down seven. It's going to be a tough home opener for Atlanta next week. Another timeout is called. This one by New England and they have no timeouts remaining. As Atlanta will go home against Miami. And New England goes west against Seattle. And look at this Detroit now. Picking up some breathing room against Green Bay and the Lions under the direction of Monty Clark will be 2 0. And there is a final Philadelphia over Minnesota. You saw the Vikings. You think they could be held to seven points? No, I didn't. I didn't think they could be held to seven points. So. They obviously were. So Philadelphia is 2 0. Atlanta will cause a lot of teams problems this year. You know, they may not be in the playoffs but uh, uh, but they're sure going to be in any game that they play in. It's Gary Pets, a former New York Jet. His team former teammates losing their second in a row today. They don't look like they're very happy John. No they aren't. They don't have much to be happy about. They were happy last week though. And so from the 20 Atlanta they second down and seven 2 12 as we approach the two minute warning. Kane, Kane gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Atlanta now, prior to that last play, had 404 yards in total offense. And so the two-minute warning is here. Two minutes left in this game at Schaefer Stadium. Atlanta Falcons with a 37 to 21 lead when we return. Doubleheader to follow one of these two games Dallas at Denver Washington at New York Denver and Washington losing their first games be sure now to check the local listings in your area that will follow immediately at the conclusion of this football game third down and seven for Atlanta at the 20 yard line Here comes Andrews again and Andrews already well over 100 yards for the day inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. Now I'm sure that quarterback Steve Bartkowski will be watching the 30 second clock very close because he wants to take as much time as he as he can now he has the first down and they can just run the clock out from this point on. That was a first down run by Andrews. Give credit to that line Ken Scott Van Ote Thillman Bryant up front Bryant 66 Thillman out of Arkansas fourth year man he's number 68. They protected Barkowski and now they're opening up the holes up the middle to give Andrews now for the day 123 yards and there he is. Boy he may have been the coup of last year's draft you know what? I think he was. The other thing we talked about the offensive line but is the blocking of the running back that didn't carry the ball whether it be Lynn Kane or William Andrews. That was something that added to that running game today. You saw Barkowski just fall on the ball. The Patriots have no timeouts remaining. And you see the time ticking away. So Atlanta will go to one and one. New England will finish this game today at one and one. As you look around the league, this Atlanta football team is going to have something to say about that Western division. Aren't they, they sure will. And how about that Detroit team? You think it's possible to go from last to first again? Tampa did it a year ago. They already won as many games as they did all of last year. I want to thank our crew, Chuck Milton, in New York, our executive producer, Bill Barnes, our producer, our director, Jim Silman. I think they misspelled his name there. Ernie Bauer, the associate producer. Thank you for your help, gentlemen. As this game is coming to a close, don't forget now the doubleheader to follow. Dallas at Denver or Washington at the Meadowlands against the New York Giants. The CBS doubleheader on this second week of the 1980 season. Well, John, an impressive win for Atlanta. It sure was, and I think that they answered a lot of questions today. Uh, Bartkowski probably had one of the best games that he ever played. Junior Miller established himself as, as a starter and a real threat on this team, and the improvement of the defense.
And there's your final. Atlanta 37, New England 21. For John Madden, I'm Gary Bender. The NFL on CBS will continue after this word from your local station.